Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our City Hall. I now call to order the regular session meeting of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022, at 6.30 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor LaHuzas? Here. Vice Mayor Carr? Here. Commissioner Tara Penny wanted me to advise y'all and apologize that he'll be running a little bit behind. Commissioner Donovan? Here. Commissioner Vaticiotis? Here. Tonight's invocation will be given by His Eminence Archbishop, Archbishop Nikitas, and welcome to speed to Sue. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we give thanks to you, Almighty God, for the blessings you give us in life. We give thanks to you for the sun and its light. We give thanks to you for the rain that quenches our thirst. We give thanks to you for the blessings which you pour into us, especially your love, your grace, and the humility you afford us. We ask that you continue to bless this city of Tarpon Springs and the people who reside here. Remember those who have been, those who are departed. Remember those who have left this life and lived here once and still abide with us in eternity. Remember those who have left this city and have gone abroad or to neighboring communities. Remember the mayor and those who serve the public. This evening as we gather to honor Congressman Gus Bilarakis, we ask that you continue to bless him so that he may work with others and guide this nation and the world so we live in peace, so we live in mutual understanding, acceptance of diff accepting differences, and being tolerant and understanding of all the things in life. This we ask in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Mayor Minister. Congressman Kaspilarakis, would you please lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. We are honored to have Congressman Michael Billerakis with us. very honored and blessed to have with us this evening His Eminence Archbishop Nikitas Kalashirthades to speak to us. We also very honored to have with us today our Congressman Michael Bilirakis. Sir, thank you for your service to our country. I would like to thank our guests, dignitaries, clergy, elected officials, and friends. I'd also like to thank every one of you for attending this special occasion this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening we'll begin our, with a special presentation to honor Congressman Kansbilirakis for his service to our country and his contributions to Tarpa Springs. Congressman Gasbilirakis was instrumental in placement of the dental clinic on Walton Avenue that today provides dental care to low income and residents in need. 
We thank you, Congressman, for your support and your assistance, and I'm very glad that I had the opportunity to work with you on this special project. Congressman Gaspidirakis strongly lobby and secure funding for the Army Corps of Engineers for the Anklo River dredging, which is so important to our local economy and to our heritage. And again, thank you for uh, being the, uh, the leader for that. <laughs> Congressman Billy Ragus has always been involved in our community, and I'm personally glad to call him my friend. Congressman Gaspar Rakis, on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, all of us, and the residents of Tarpa Springs, it is my honor to present to you the key to the city. And now we're gonna go here to the front of the podium to present you with the key of the city, all of us as a team. Yet. No. Don't leave yet. On to something <coughs> else in that camera. <laughs> Did you? Eh? Katsu, katsu. Costa, would you please sit down, please? We're not finished yet. Thank you. Congressman Billy Rackets, do you want to say a few words? Thank you. Thank you so very much. This means the world to me. 
It really does. You know, you get awards as, member, uh, as a member of Congress, and my father used to say the same thing. Uh, we're very, very much alike, I think you can, you can tell. Uh, we even look alike. But uh, when you get something like this, the key to the city from your hometown, it means the world to you. Some of the awards that we get, maybe we haven't earned, and some maybe we deserve an award, uh, but to have this from my hometown, where I grew up, this beloved Tarpon Springs of mine, it, it, it means the world to me. And I want to thank, I'm not gonna talk too long, Christo, I, because I know you have a big meeting here, and I want to thank you for what, all your efforts. And uh, he was my host when we went to the island, the Greek island of Kalimnos, where all four of my grandparents are from, uh, just th this October, and they honored me. Uh, and I, I appreciate it. I couldn't have done it, really, gotten around, navigated w without you, Christo, because it's been so many years since we've been there. But boy, oh boy, was that a homecoming, too. Uh, my mom, I want to thank my mother, uh, first of all, for giving me everything. She was... This is her high school. You, you guys can cut me off if I'm speaking too long, okay, Costa? Oh. Because I know you have important business to do. Uh, but my mother, uh, this is her high school and, and my middle school. Uh, and most, a lot of us here, uh, it, it was called a junior high. That's how old I am <laughs> back then. But uh, what a wonderful place to go to school. As a matter of fact, we started, my brother uh, is here with me too, um, Dr. Manuel Bilarakis. And uh, we did everything together. And, uh, and we grew up together in this wonderful town. And uh, talk about a public servant. Uh, you know, I'm a politician. This guy is a true public servant. He cared about his community. He cares about his people. Uh, and he cares about, more importantly, he cares about his church, his ecclesia. But uh, I used to walk from the elementary school, Tarpon Springs Elementary, uh, to, and then of course, uh, here to the uh, junior high school, and then every day I would go to my grandfather's bakery, and and I would work in the bakery, and that was the most wonderful experience for me. It really was. Uh, all the great things, and uh, of course, uh, his eminence, Nikita. Where is the Nikita? Did he leave already? Oh, okay, all right. Uh, was there to greet me, and if, if he wasn't there. My, of course, my grandfather was there. Costa Miaulis, I was named after him. Uh, and of course, my Aunt Callie, my Aunt Callie Lewis, who really means the world to me. Uh, God rest her soul. She was really another great role model. And, and I learned to speak the language in, in tar and uh, actually at, at the bakery. Of course, we went to Greek school. Sometimes we weren't paying attention in Greek school, though. But I love Greek school, to be honest with you. I really look forward to going because I love the Greek language. I love our customs, our traditions. As a matter of fact, my, fa my grandfather, my dad's father, uh, came. Uh, he was in Tarpon Springs. Uh, my dad was born in Tarpon Springs. My mom was born in Tarpon Springs, raised in Tarpon. Dad was uh, raised in uh, Western Pennsylvania in, in Clariton. Uh, but uh, after he moved back, everybody comes back to Tarpon Springs, right, Nick? Yeah, you go other places, but you can't find anything more unique than Tarpon Springs, Florida. There's no question. Uh, and, but to my grandfather, uh, Emmanuel Bilarakis, moved back here in 1960. But can you believe, when my brother Emmanuel was born, but can you believe, of course, with my grandmother, Irini Biliraki, uh, but can you believe that he had the opportunity to come back home in the United States of America? I mean, where do you find that other than this beautiful, wonderful town? He met all the people that he grew up with in Galimnos and, and, and hung out with them. I mean, that's pretty unique. That's pretty darn unique. That's going back and it's kind of like our own uh, Disney World here in Tarpon Springs. It's really true. And, and my grandmother 
was a wonderful role model, Maria Miauli. She, uh, she was a public servant as well, served over 20 years uh, for the Philoctahos, and uh, I keep saying that, uh, you know, I tell people she outlasted Roosevelt. <laughs> uh, but she really did a lot for this community, and every time someone came uh, from Greece, particularly from our island of Kalimnos, they would stay upstairs in that bakery uh, until they got their, their feet wet and until they got situated. Uh, so what a wonderful place. I would not trade it for the world, folks. And, and you know, it, it's real world experience. They can talk to us about, and I represent some wonderful cities and areas uh, in this area, but they can talk to us about maybe debatable whether we're the best people. I don't know, I think so. But I will tell you, we are real people. There's not, right fathers, there's nothing fake about us. And, and, and what I learned from this town, socializing with, from, with every group growing up in the public school system here, I would not trade for the world, okay? <laughs> after all, after all, produced two members of Congress, right? Two archbishops, two archbishops, a rock star, right? And Bertie Higgins, right? Yeah. Anyone heard of Key Largo? <coughs> okay, the first born mayor, foreign born mayor, he came here when he was 13 years old, uh, and he loves this town more than anything. Probably, I don't know if more than God even knows, but <laughs> it's probably tied. I would say that uh, they're on the same level. And even a movie star who moved here a couple years ago, uh, Antonio Zabato, I brought him here for Epiphany, okay? And he fell in love with this city and bought a house near Howard Park. Uh, so uh, he was supposed to be here tonight, but uh, he's taking classes at St. Petersburg College, wow. which is a wonderful thing. So, you know, folks, it takes a village. It really does. That's the only thing I agree with Hillary on. It takes a village. <laughs> and boy, and boy, do we have a village here. We call it Toeliniko Chorio. And I, I want to mention again my godmother, Maria Spanu, who was my second mother, really. She raised me. She taught me her ways. She was from Asia Minor, uh, from Smyrni. And boy, oh boy, did I learn culture and education and manners. Sometimes I forget that I know manners, but, uh, but uh, in most cases I do uh, use those manners, but I always think of what she would do and what she would say. Uh, she, was, uh, she, raised, she was a second mother, uh, again, for my, my brother, uh, Minoli, as well, and her family is here. Uh, Maria and Ronnie Andreas and Thea, uh, Thea Kambarakis, and thank you very much. She's rep uh, they're representing her tonight. So raise your hand, please. Thank you very much for being here. <laughs> Christopher Steele. Christopher Steele is amazing. He is an amazing individual. I don't know if he's here tonight, but boy, oh boy, what he has done. He has put us on the map as far as artwork is concerned. And all the murals you see in Tallahassee, I have the replicas in my office in Washington. I have a bunch of sponges there too, so everybody can take a sponge when they leave to remind us of this great city. But uh, Christopher Steele, all the murals that you see in the chamber in Tallahassee, Johnny's thinking I'm talking too long. I know you, Johnny. Yeah, uh, all the, all the, <laughs> all the uh, murals that you see in the chamber in Tallahassee, that's Christopher Steele. And he did a wonderful job at the uh, hospital, too. Uh, so uh, yeah, another uh, star uh, that, that really loves this city so very much and traveled to, uh, to Greece with us as well. Not with me, but with, uh, with Christo, with our great mayor. So uh, I'm not going to say any more other than thank God for the sponge divers, OK? Thank God for the spongers. The spongers built the church, okay? The spongers did. They brought us here. 
my great grandfather, both great great grandfathers were here to be on in, uh, in 1905. And Dad, uh, I tell the story about the President of the United States coming to Tarpon and how we got the Enclo River dredged. And I'm not going to get into it now, but. Uh, Christopher Steele told me the other day, and he saw, showed me the picture, that your grandfather was on that boat with the president. So I've got to verify that. But it sure looked like him. So, Sasu Karistume, I want to continue to work. And, and, uh, and of course, uh, I want to live here uh, for the rest of my life. And, and I do feel bad for, for our kids because they didn't have this growing up like we did. No. This is extremely unique, ladies and gentlemen. I know we've kept the customs and the traditions and, and, and the non-Greeks that are here are, are very much for that. And I appreciate them so very much too. Uh, but, but the kids aren't gonna experience what we did. Uh, and, uh, and, that, and that's a shame. Uh, but, uh, but I will be, I am very grateful. One more thing, I had a, 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 a family that was visiting uh, just the other day from Washington, D.C. Both the, the mother and the father are from Greece and they're very, very successful financially. And they have two doctors, uh, sons, two doctors, the name is Polymeropoulos from Washington. and. Uh, the, the son, one of the doctors, Christo, was turning the corner on the other canis to meet me at Mykonos for, for dinner. And uh, he, he leaned over to his dad in the car and says, Dad, I want to be here every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> thank you very much. And God bless all of you. And thank you all for being here uh, to support me tonight. To, uh, and now I would like to invite his eminence, Archbishop, to the podium to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I didn't know that I was speaking <laughs> this evening. Tarpon, indeed, is a wonderful and unique place. It's one of those communities where people just accepted one another. We never looked at identities. We never looked at social economic levels. People here just knew each other and appreciated one another. Tarpon is a place that produces, as my younger cousin and congressman said, it produces people of quality and character. And that's because we are molded by not only our own families, but a greater community. It is a community that is known, yes, for the Hellenic heritage and the people who came here for sponges. But it is also a community that's known for the Innes paintings, for example. An artist unknown to most people, but of the highest standing. Which means that Tarpon Springs is full of secrets. It's filled with good things and surprises. I also want to thank the community because I'm a product of this community, as is my own brother, John, who also contributed to the development and the formation and the identity of many young people. And those who not only learned songs and dances, but also the people who traveled to Greece and various other parts of the world because people from Tarpon do travel. We don't like to sit still. We don't only visit the islands of our heritage, but we visit other places like Israel and Russia 
And now I wait to welcome groups to England. Some of you have come in the past, and I hope to see you there in the very near future. I will be waiting for you, Mr. Mayor Chris, whose real name is Chrysostomos, for those of you who don't know. He's given the name of a very special saint in the church. If you've ever re read Narcissus and Goldmund, you would know the name is one of those works by Hermann Hess, which most people don't bother to read. But it means the golden mouth. And he was a person who spoke out against injustice. And prior to the beginning of the meeting, the mayor and I spoke about issues of justice. And I pray that you will continue to speak out against injustice, especially the issues of modern day slavery and human trafficking because they are critical and we as a church, as a community, as a city and as people must what, do what we can to make the world a better place. Thank you for being so gracious. Thank you for giving me the podium, the opportunities to speak and to see old familiar faces from old Tarpon families. I'll close with something that <coughs> happened once in Chicago. I was teaching at Loyola University, and afterwards there was a group of students, and they were carrying on various conversations, and I entered the conversation with them, and one of the young women said that she was from Florida. And I said, well, what part of Florida? She said, well, I'm from Tarpon Springs. <laughs> and I asked her her last name, what's your family name? And she told me, and I said to her, you're not from Tarpon. Your family may have moved there recently. And she said, how would you know? I said, because I'm from Tarpon. And I am proud to be from Tarpon. God bless you all and thank you. Honorable Congressman Michael Bilarakis, would you like to say a few words? No? Okay. Gus, would you help me with that, please? I just want to thank the city for remembering Gus. He's very, very proud of being from Iowa. He's an Irish man. He's from Florida. He's huge community in Riverdale. Uh, his wife and children are huge professors. And uh, he's really a lot of pride in his family. He's just one of the most. Congressman, would you please come closer to the microphone so people can hear it? Dad, Dad, they want you to get a little closer. They can't hear you. People cannot hear you at home. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're just, we're just killing a lot of time. Oh, there I know you're all very anxious to get going with the meetings. Uh, but uh, a few years ago, I was asked to speak at this, at this church event in, in uh, St. Augustine. And uh, uh, I, I had been out of Congress for a while. I had a staff of uh, 16 people in Congress. I didn't have to do too very many things on my own. Uh, all of a sudden, hey, I've got to make a speech and I have nobody to write it for me. <laughs> and so I sat down and something that I believed in very, very much, and that is that we are what we have been. We are what we have been. And we, we are, we, 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 Hellenes are so very successful because of the history of the Hellenic people in this country and in the entire world. But I went into all of these things, did a lot, a lot of research, and, uh, and, and here it is, Tarpon Springs. Two congressmen, yeah. two congressmen from Tarpon Springs. Very good.
so uh, anyhow, uh, they, they, they said it and said it very, very well. But the bakery, this, that, Pappas's, all, all of all of the, the everything that we've the, that we have uh, uh, made available to us during the years. I didn't have the upgrade, upgrowing, upkeep that my my sons did, but because uh, uh, I was when I was about two years old, the depression hit, and my father had bundled the family in the back of a pickup truck, an open pickup truck, truck I guess it was it wasn't a pickup, I was more of a truck, and uh, moved to Clareton, Pennsylvania, looking for work, and so I grew up in Clareton, Pennsylvania, uh, as as a result of that. Uh, but we are what we have been, and we are many successful people in this room here today, and that is as a result of our old timers. Thank you so much. Consul General of Greece, the Honorable Lukas Tsokos is here with us today. Do you want to say a few words, sir? At the podium. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. It is a high honor for me to be here today and uh, speak about uh, Gas Bilirakis, uh, your representative, our representative. Um, as you probably know, I recently uh, arrived in Florida six months ago, and before coming here, I was told by different people in Athens, Greece, that uh, you should meet with uh, Congressman Bilirakis. Uh, he's a very important person, and of course I knew that, because I, um, I mean, everybody in Greece knows um, not only you, but also your father and the legacy of the Bilirakis family, who were so much influential. Uh, in, in both in Washington and, and here. So I said, of course, I, I'm going to meet him, and I'm sure that uh, the reputation is well justified. And uh, this is not only uh, the, repre uh, the representative of Tarpo Spring, but we feel, uh, we feel him like the representative of Greece in Washington, and this is very important to us. I'm not going to repeat any of the uh, high value of contribution of the Bilirakis family and also of gas uh, to, to the cause of Greece. Uh, I would, today I would just prefer to point out the following. Uh, when I came here, I met him, and I didn't only find a very important person, important politician, I also found a very good man. And this is, this is very important for me at a personal level. And I think this is important for Greece, for Greece. For, it's important for the people of, of the Tarpon Springs and of the whole area here to be represented by him. But it's important for Greece because we know that there is someone in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, advocating our cause who is a good man. And this, this counts. Trust me, believe me. So thank you for doing all this. And uh, it, again, it has been a great honor for me to be here today. Thank you. And now I would like to ask my fellow commissioners to comment, and I will begin with uh, Vice Mayor Carr. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, growing up in Tarpon Springs, I've always known the Bill Arrakis name. Um, had the honor to get to know you as a commissioner, and thank you for your service, uh, fighting for our veterans of the U.S., um, and also us here locally, too. So thank you for everything you've done for us here locally, and keep up the fight. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. You said tonight our city is so unique, and we're so lucky to have somebody that was born here, raised here, graduated Tarpon High, truly understands us. So thank you very much. You're a great man. you got a great family, great supporters. Uh, thank you for being here. Commissioner Vatikuris. Thank you. I guess there's not much more than we can say about our gratitude towards you. Uh, for me personally, we go back, uh, our grandmothers, and I used to carry the butter cans, the flour, and everything into the bakery uh, 
uh, you know, for the Easter Guluria, and um, that was always a treat for me, just like you've expressed. And, and so I, I know you, I know the entire families, and um, thank you for being here, and thank you all, Bilirakis, Manus, Mayuli family for being here. Thank you. Congressman Gans Bilirakis, again, I want to thank you for your service to our country and all your contributions to Tarpa Springs. And I am very honored to call you friend. And now we're going to go to the public comments. Father Rosakis. I guess I'm comfortable here, but I'm also comfortable up there being, uh, <laughs> having done a number of shows up here. Um, a number of years ago, um, I did go with the contingency from Tarpon to England for the enthronement of the Archbishop. Um, while we were on that trip, one of, the, one of the people on that trip looked at me and said, Father, you are a Tarponite. And that was a big honor for me to hear that. I stumbled into Tarpon Springs after having served uh, Clearwater for 21 years. Uh, it was supposed to be an interim thing. Well, it turned out that I became dean of the cathedral for three years, and it was the great three years that I spent there with the people of Tarpon Springs. I'm a pre-World War II baby, and I grew up in an area something like Tarpon Springs. So I felt very comfortable in Tarpon Springs. Um, a number of years ago, Gus Bilirakis called me and said, would you be willing to come to Washington, D.C. and give the prayer for Congress, the opening of Congress? And I, sa I said, yes, I would. And it was an honor for me uh, to do that, to have, uh, have uh, Gus ask me to be there. And I'm always indebted to him for that honor of being, um, and I think maybe I was one of the only Greek Orthodox priests that have done that so far, uh, so it was a big honor. Um, Tarpon Springs unique? It sure is, and I've, I learned how unique it was about a month ago. Townsend isn't here, but his mother painted a beautiful mural in Old City Hall on the wall, the history of Tarpon. And there are many characters uh, that were in the, is in that mural, and she said to me, uh, would you be willing to portray one of the characters, in fact, two of the characters, because they were parallel? Um, I said, sure. So I did the conquistador, who thought he was a religious man, and uh, he, uh, but he was all for himself. And then at the end, of course, I played the Greek Orthodox priest at the, uh, at the epiphany part of it, and um, another religious man. Even in the costume, you could see parallels. Uh, Costa was there, and he, he witnessed it. But uh, it really brought the history of Tarpon really to my heart and soul by being able to participate in that. And if you haven't seen the mural, go to Old City Hall inside, and you will see the mural on the wall. It's great. Gus, thank you so much. You are a good friend. We, uh, we also, with us tonight, we have uh, a visiting state senator from Rhode Island, Senator uh, Raptakis, who wants to say a few words to you. Thank you, uh, Mayor, members of the City Council here in Tarpon. Gus, it was an honor and pleasure to be here today, and I found out late this afternoon, we had just flown in late last night. We have a second home in uh, Clearwater, Florida, and uh, it's an honor to be here. And as I was running for office many, many years ago, about uh, 23 years ago, being a state senator, and every time I see Gus, he goes, Lou, when are you running for Congress to join me? I said, well, the problem is in Rhode Island, we're a small state. We only have two members of Congress, and it's a, probably a difficult mountain to climb. But working with Gus uh, as a state senator and Gus as a federal uh, member of Congress, it's very important.
to work on issues of concern between the United States and our roots, Greece, but also the tenacity that Gus has portrayed right here in Tarpon Springs. I came here about six years ago for the first time, but I knew about his dad 23 years ago when I first got elected in Rhode Island on the state level, the work that he did for the community here in Tarpon Springs, for all the constituents, and it's a legacy, ladies and gentlemen. And then for Gus to carry on that legacy, it's very important that the people of this community, Tarpon Springs, respect the Bilirakis family. And, and everybody should be proud of what the family has done for all the residents of this community. Gus, thank you again for serving as a colleague in government, even though we're on the state level, but we fight together for all issues, for all Americans and for all Greek Americans. Thank you. We are going to the public comments. If anyone has any comments, please come forward to the podium. State your name, your address, you'll be given four minutes. Also with us, we have uh, Mr. Maynes, who is representing our community. If you please come forward, if you want to say a few words. No. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Chief Young, watch me. Long story behind that. First of all, I'd like to, I'm very proud of our family. There's 15 cousins, first cousins, from Manuses, Bilorakises, Miolises, Lalekases, everyone, and everyone is loved and raised by all of us. But I was the best because I got to ride the coattails of everybody. My, my godfather, Mike Bilirakis, when I was in Washington, before he was a congressman, he was, in a, he was a, a chemical engineer, and he said, tonight, I'm taking you to see some gentleman that might make it one day. I was 12 years old, the gentleman was John F. Kennedy. So, then the best one is, of course, Archbishop Nikitas, who we share the same name. So therefore, I always throw that around. But I just want to say I'm so proud of this community to have these gentlemen, Nikita's recognized all over the world in his trafficking uh, uh, committee who stands with the Pope and the, uh, the Canterbury, the Archbishop of Canterbury, that's the committee. So it's, it's great for us. And then, of course, Gus, he was always the little one in the family, and we always beat him. <laughs> and I just want you to know, as president of the parish, we thank you. We thank the Bilorakises. You know how we love Nikita. And just remember, the key 10% belongs to St. Nicholas. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> With us tonight, we also have Mr. John Lulias, who has done so much for our community, not only for our dance group, but also he's conducting our sister city ceremony. So, John, thank you. If you want to say a few words, you're welcome to it. I just want to say I'm proud of my cousin. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks. If anyone has any comments, please come to the podium, state your name and your address, you'll be given four minutes. Mr. Mayor, uh, Mike Rizzola, uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody here, uh, to the commissioners and uh, to the chief and everybody else. Uh, just really quickly, I've had the pleasure of working for Congressman Gus Bilirakis for about seven years or so now. and. Um, We've used the word unique a lot today uh, to describe the city, but I think we can use it as well to describe Gus Berlarakis. Gus, you are a man that, despite of all the challenges in D.C. and the, the political turmoil and, and just everything, you stay above it all, and you never forget your values. You've never forgotten what it means to serve the people, and something as a testimony to your father is something that inspires everybody, not just the people that you know in Tarpon, but even 
the, you know, the younger generation. And I just want to say thank you. And I also want to make a PSA that we do have pastries, which was Gus's idea, um, <laughs> outside in the hall. So please, on your way out, make sure you, you grab a pastry and enjoy. But I just want to say thank you again for everybody to coming out here and supporting a man that we all love, Congressman Gus Perlarakis. Thank you. Michael, thank you for your service in the Marine Corps. Senior Manager LaCourse, do you want to say something? Just watch the time. Okay. First, I'm already <laughs> hearing. Can I say something? Yes, please. Perhaps I'm the only person here that's not from Tarpon, although I love it very much. Jill Melconian from um, Palm Harbor, I live in now, was on many committees and things in Clearwater. But I just wanted to say, if there was such a thing as a key to Pinellas County, a key to the state of Florida, and a key to the United States of America, Gus Bilaraka should have it. Eforisto. <laughs> We are getting close to the time. We're going to take one more. George Kalianis, uh, 624 Boehner Drive, Tarpon Springs, 34689. Um, I just want to come up really quick and just congratulate you, Congressman. It's such an honor being here tonight and seeing this award bestowed upon you. There's no one more deserving in this nation. It, it has been such an honor. I'm getting emotional up here. It's been such an honor being able to work for you and to have the opportunity to just know you. It's, you're not only my mentor, but a great friend to me and my family. And I'm so thankful for you. And I tell everyone, if there was a representative in this nation, if every representative was like Congressman Bilirakis, if every senator was like Congressman Bilirakis, and if the President of the United States was like Congressman Bilirakis, this would be such a different and great nation. It's already a great nation, but we would have people who understand that it is we the people and the congressman embodies that so much. And sir, I'm just so thankful for you. Thank you for your service and God bless you, Congressman. Thank you. We are running out of time, so uh, I wanna thank you all for being here tonight to honor Gus Bilirakis. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short break. We have to be back at 7.30 to start the public hearing.
We are now reconvening our BOC meeting at 7.30 p.m. Before we start our uh, public hearing, I'd like to announce that item number 23, the application 21170 at 38652 U.S. Highway 19, second reading has been deferred. And also, uh, I'd like to remind to everyone that at 7.30, the public hearing begins in, in a few seconds. And uh, once the public hearing portion is completed, we will go back to the meeting where, uh, where we left off, which will be public comments. And again, I also like to remind to everyone that based on the city rules and procedures, all public comments must be directed only to the chair of the meeting in a professional, ma professional manner with respect without a personal attacks. Cheering and clapping is not permitted, and I want to thank you for your uh, cooperation. And now we're going to the public hearing, which is item number 20, the ordinance 2000. 22-02, <coughs> amending land development code section 56.06, mobile phone, uh, mobile food uh, dispensing vehicles. This is a second reading. City attorney, please read the ordinance 2022-02. Thank you, Mayor. This is ordinance 2022-02, an ordinance amending section 56.06 of the Tarpon Springs Code to amend subsection nine thereof related to signage making related findings, providing for severability, providing for codification, providing for an effective date. That was the second and final reading of ordinance 2022-02 by title only. Thank you. Public uh, staff report. I can handle that, Mayor. This is, uh, this is just a follow-up. This is the second hearing on this ordinance. Uh, the city attorney's office is recommended recommending removing one sentence from this particular section of the code 56.06. The sentence that we're asking that be deleted is, is as follows. The mobile food dispensing vehicle must display a graphic image name or branding of the primary food or drink establishment. Uh, we're asking for that to be removed. That's the only change in the, um, in the ordinance as it was previously adopted. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Please state your name and your address for the record. You'll be given four minutes. Here to lack is 514 Ashland Avenue. Um, assuming some of this uh, has evolved from previous public comments and discussions about the food trucks and uh, the Dunham's lawsuit. And from my understanding, and maybe Mr. Trask can clarify it for the public, but the problem wasn't so much the signage is that the truck had to be of that primary business. So if you actually read number nine, not the part stricken out, a mobile food dispensing vehicle may only be operated by the primary business owner as an extension of the primary business. So I don't see how Solberger or the lady who does the uh, Depless or any of these other food trucks that would like to operate in the city can still do that with just the removal of that one sentence. You're still in the same position as before, unless that food truck is from that business, like Rusty Billy has one, or maybe a couple others that I'm not aware of, they're still not allowed. And if you look at the uh, Trask invoice, there's $259 for this suit. I don't know how much was spent before, but it doesn't appear that this really solves the problem that the people who operate food trucks uh, were describing to you. So unless this solves it, I don't think you're fixing anything. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments on this item? If you do, please come forward to the podium. I hear none. The chair will retain the motion. So moved. Second. Are there any... Uh, Commission comments on this item. I hear none. Roll call, please. Commissioner Vaticiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Luzes? Yes, thank you. We are now going to the item number 21, which is the ordinance 2021 17, building permit fees. This is the first reading. City Attorney, please read the ordinance. 
Mayor, this is Ordinance 2021-17, an ordinance of the City of Turpin Springs, Florida, amending Section 6-4.1 of Chapter 6 of the Code of Ordinances to update the fees for building permits, small scope single trade permits, not requiring plan review, including building, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fuel slash gas, re-roof permits, site permits, tree removal permits and inspection fees, floodplain permits, expired permits and refunds, administrative fees, technology fees, state fees, fees for other services, after the fact permit fees, inspection fees and private provider fees, providing for building permit fee <coughs> exemptions, providing for conflict, providing for severability, providing for codification, and providing for an effective date of this ordinance. That was the first reading of Ordinance 2021-17. The second reading will be held on March 8th, 2022, and this was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only on February 23rd, 2022, or, or will be, sorry. Thank you. Staff report. Mr. Powell. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Kevin Powell, Building Development Department Director. Uh, we brought this to workshop several months ago um, and uh, made a few changes that didn't get carried over into this, which I do have to update if it's approved. We'll go ahead and update a couple of those things. Uh, a little back uh, history on this. The fee schedule has not been updated since uh, 2003. Uh, so. There's been a few changes in state statute that require a uh, discount if using uh, private provider inspection and plan review. So we had to put that in there. And at the same time, we wanna go ahead and uh, simplify the um, fee schedule. So we know that uh, if you're changing out an air conditioner, no matter what size it is, it's the same price across the board, electric service, water heater, that type of thing. Uh, we had went through a comparison as to where we are at uh, in the county uh, with the proposed changes and we are uh, lower than uh, Dunedin and Pinellas County. We were comparable with Safety Harbor, however, Safety Harbor has changed over to the county so they're under the county uh, fee schedule now also. Um, we discussed the items exempt from permitting um, as we talked during the workshop, there was things that uh, was a lot of hearsay as to what's exempted from permitting, so we went ahead and uh, put that in writing. Uh, during the workshop, we had talked about uh, accessory structures and concrete, and that uh, had an 80 square feet, but we decided to go with 100 square feet. So uh, if we approve this tonight, we'll go ahead and make that adjustment in the next reading to modify everything to the 100 square feet. Um, other than that, there hasn't really been any changes to it, uh, pending any questions from the commission. Thank you. We're going to the public comments of this item. Do you have any public comments? Please come forward to the podium. I hear none. The chair will attain the motion. Motion to approve. Second. We go to our commission comments. Uh, Mr. Powell, I want to thank you for spending time with me discussing this item. And uh, I am glad that it's going to be easier for people to be able to, uh, to get a permit. And also by uh, making those adjustments, we're still going to be uh, the lower than average. Safety Harbor, as you mentioned, is not the lowest anymore since it went to the county but uh, we're gonna be lower than Dunedin Pinellas County. In regards to the uh, permit exceptions, I'd like to see the uh, A, D, E, and G to increase the work area uh, without a permit from 80 square feet to 100 square feet. And um, if you please make a note to that, and uh, uh, I'd like to uh, suggest that to my fellow commissioners that'll be a lot easier for people to be able to uh, to pour concrete for 100 square feet, which is 10 by 10, and also to buy a set, which is the common size right now to fit that area. And also to do, uh, to repair stucco, uh, instead of 80 feet to increase it to 100. So with that, I'd like to go to uh, Vice Mayor Carr. 
Is that comments? Uh, Commission Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just to clarify, so for the building permit exemptions, uh, pretty much anywhere I see 80 square feet, you'd like it bumped to 100? Yeah, correct. Okay. That's it. Um, I would ask Mr. Powell what, what your take is on that. I mean, do you, is 20 feet kind of negligible for you? You, you know, 80, 80 square feet, 100 square feet, when we look at uh, playhouses or shed type of structures, you know, 80 to 100 square feet is pretty pretty normal. We start getting over that, then you know, you're, you're, you're getting into a, basically an accessory structure type of situation. So I think maxing out at 100 square feet is, is reasonable. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Terrapani. Thanks, Mayor. Um, Mr. Powell, I just wanted to thank you. Um, I think the workshops that we had on this were extremely productive. Um, and I think that uh, outlining what you've done as it relates to the exemptions and putting it into uh, more of a written format, I think is only going to help the building department streamline and help residents have a better idea of some of the projects that they can do. In some cases, might be uh, emergency projects. Um, I think you did well on maintaining a balance as it relates to the increase in fees. Um, as the mayor said, we, we always want to remain competitive uh, with surrounding communities, so I appreciate uh, trying to balance that while still bringing us you know, uh, up to date and try and um, you know, increase a little bit of revenue through the building, the building department. Um, so with that, that's all I have. I just wanted to uh, thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Commissioner Tecutis, comments? Yes, thank you. Um, on these waivers, if I remember correctly, we had to get somebody's approval on them. Is that right? On the the waivers, like the eighty to hundred. Uh, well, there was there was never an exemption for it. There was always people would say, "Oh, this is exempt," but it was never in writing. So we would want to at least have it in writing. But besides, in our when we amend the Florida Building Code by putting exemptions in there, they have to be approved by someone. I thought. No, it's going. This this portion of it does not have to go back to the Building Commission. It gives us the ability to uh, amend certain items of the Building Code, and uh, this would just be by ordinance, okay. our local ordinance. And have you run through any pro forma in terms of what the expected? I know 50 percent of the general fund pays for the building department. Have you done any pro forma to see what increase um, or less of an impact? I know when we were looking at this back over the summer, I think we were going to be somewhere around the 20% range out of the general fund versus the 50%. Coming from the general fund instead yeah. of 50%. And it may okay. be a little better now as construction has picked up and some new, you know, bigger projects coming in. So it's going to fluctuate from year to year. But I think on a on a, a regular year, you're probably looking about 20% out of general fund. Yeah. And I, uh, the other thing, I, I regret I couldn't catch uh, Mr. Powell earlier uh, in the day, but I passed him a note on this um, permit fees, uh, Table A. Um, one of the examples that he gave, the 200000 down there on the $50,000, to five hundred. dollars um, by my calculation, that $5 ought to be $10 for each additional 1000 if, if it's not, then it'd be $400 plus five times 100 for the $200,000 example, and that would come out to $900 instead of the $1,400. And so I backed it out, and I, I, we don't need to work on that tonight, but maybe okay. just we'll, double I'll check on that for the second reading. Okay. Okay. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you, Mayor. That's it. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion in a second. I will suggest that we modify the motion to include the, uh, the exceptions. Modify the motion to include 100 square feet across the board. Second. Thank you. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Commissioner Vaticiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Luzes? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Item 22 is the resolution 2022-04 golf course fit schedule. See that attorney, please read the resolution. Thank you, Mayor. This is resolution 2020-04, resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, authorizing increases in the golf course fees and providing for an effective date hereof. There was a reading of resolution 2022-04 by title only. Thank you. Staff report, Mr. Smith. Good evening, Paul Smith, Public Services Director. With me here tonight is Golf Course Manager Howard Hunt, if there's any questions that he can help answer. Uh, the golf course continues to evaluate its business and adapt to changes. Uh, business at the golf course has seen an upward trend since May of 2020. 
It translates to many days where there's no available tea times or their tea times are in high demand. Um, we've evaluated an extensive survey of the area golf course rates. We're finding that our rates are, are lower, between $5 to $11 lower per round, depending on the time of day rate, to a nearby municipal golf course. And also our rates are about $5 to $30 lower per round in the area semi-private golf courses. These are golf courses that are open to the public. In addition, operating costs are rising at a higher than average rate across the golf industry, including labor and golf course maintenance, and these cost increases are affecting us directly. Due to these factors, we recommend an increase in our rates to take effect April 16, 2022. We're proposing the following rate changes. Increase all daily rates by $5, excluding annual membership rates and membership cart rates. The annual membership rates will remain the same, and the membership cart rate will increase $1. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We are now going to the public comments of this item. Please state your name and your address for the record. We'll be given four minutes. Phil Scandalaris, um, 935 Bayshore Drive. Howard is actually my uh, golf pro, uh, too. He's been teaching me. I uh, totally agree that the golf course needs to have uh, an increase in rates. And absolutely that the, we need to do, think about doing some updating on the clubhouse. You can't get, I mean, there's no beer cart girls, uh, you know, uh, currently there, or uh, we don't have any actually food being, uh, like really being served. It's a, uh, an update there. And actually just bring it into this, uh, you know, actually into the 2022 uh, market would be great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next person, please. Paniotti Kuyas, 595 Peninsula Avenue. I want to thank staff for increasing the rates. I think we can get away with an $8 increase across the board. Uh, we don't have many other uh, things that we can provide. And what else can we do to increase the revenue in our golf course? I firmly believe, as uh, the other individual stated before, if we have a, a golf cart girl or boy, who, and also a full liquor license, because I'm telling you, if you're paying $48 to play golf, you're more than likely paying 60, 70 in liquor. And we can drive up revenue. We also need to consider a new clubhouse, knock down, redone, where it can be a, a kitchen or bar where people can hang out afterwards and have good food after they golf, as well as a banquet hall or somewhere to rent out, such as the rotaries or uh, wedding receptions. Th there's a lot of potential that we're missing out on our golf course, and I think it's one of our biggest cash cows. And we, try to, we need to try to do whatever we can to make it the most inviting golf course in the area. Thank you. Thank you. Next person, please. Good evening, board members. Anita Protus, 901 Bayshore Drive. Our golf course used to be a PGA golf course years ago, if no one knows it here. And it was a, a star golf course in, in a facility in Pine Ellis County. There used to be a restaurant there, chickens ran around wild, and the whole community, especially <coughs> on Sunday mornings, would go there for breakfast and on Saturdays. We let it go, we lost our status, but we need to bring it back <coughs> because it's a very nice golf course in North Pine Ellis County, and we need to bring the history back about Tarpon Springs Golf Course. I don't play golf, I just read the history about it. And that's what saved, they said, former Mayor Bill Lane's life because when he had his heart attack, they said if he hadn't played so much golf, he wouldn't have made it, but he made himself strong on the golf course and that was his excuse to his wife every day to go play golf. <laughs> Next speaker, please. Good evening, Mike Eisner, 1515 Riverside Drive. Um, I also agree that we should be looking into uh, making it into a more of a banquet hall, as well as bringing in the extra money from liquors and whatever else, but it should have some food that goes with it. I, uh, I don't see any place that we have that we can utilize as a banquet hall. We have a lot of untapped businesses that would love to have you know functions there and parties and so I'd like, I also agree with that idea, but thank you. Thank you. 
Do we have any other comments on this item? I hear none. We need a motion. Motion to approve 2020 resolution 2020-04. Second. Thank you. Uh, we're now going to the uh, commission comments. I got a couple things that I'd like to ask. First, I would like to uh, congratulate our staff, Mr. Smith, for the golf course. Looks great. Um, I've been getting a lot of compliments the way it works. I'm not a golfer. I don't golf, but people tell me how nice it is. Uh, can you tell us what improvements do you have planned for the future? I can tell you we purposely held off on some of the major capital expenses just because as we've talked before in the past we've made major renovations to buildings, um, course renovations overall and what happened it put our cash position in a negative. I think we're currently around $900,000 to the negative but I will say to the positive uh, we're somewhere around $345,000 added net this past year to pay that amount down. In other words, it was higher than that by quite a bit. So important progress forward. That's one of the reasons we're recommending the, the rates to you. Um, but it's something that we'll want to consider any further expenditures carefully just because of the position we're in. But I can tell you day in, day out maintenance. Howard's um, company that he oversees that uh, the private maintenance company is doing an outstanding job. And uh, the customers let us know. Thank you. Uh, the addition revenue, do you have any uh, idea what the addition revenue will be with that increase? Yes, sir. Howard Hunt, golf course manager. Thank you. Uh, with the $5 increase across the board, currently with the rounds we're playing now, it should generate somewhere in the ballpark of uh, $150,000 more. Thank you. <clears throat> Can you tell us about the uh, discount card that you're offering to uh, the players? Yes, sir. Uh, two years ago, we did a small rate increase on some of our fees. Um, we did not do a increase across the board. We only increased certain things like discounted fees like leagues and that sort of thing. And we also implemented to try to help the residents play more golf, a $3 discount guard card that is free to all Tarpon Springs residents. Um, all they have to do is come in and show their ID or show proof of, you know, land ownership or, you know, a water bill or whatever, and they can get the discount card and use it for $3 off of our rack rate. They don't get $3 off a discounted rate like a Twilight or, you know, nine holes, but they get a $3 discount on our, on our regular rates. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's all and I also, have. just so everybody knows, you know, if you're a Tarpon Springs resident, the annual membership is discounted about... 15% off what we charge any other outside Tarpon Springs <coughs> residents, what their membership would cost. And that, that is not going to change. We're not going to go up on that. Thank you so much. Vice Mayor Carr, any comments? Sure. Um, you know, I don't play much golf, but when I do, I play Tarpon Springs. So um, I know it's in great condition when I played it last. Uh, you've been a great uh, leader there at the course, and I know it's uh, made a big difference over the past few years. Um, driving by it, you can see it. It looks great. Uh, but also walking it, uh, walking the greens and walking the fairways, it looks great too. There's no brown spots really. Um, so great job with that. I think you guys should be proud of that. Um, overall, uh, I support the, the fees. It's something that we have to be competitive with the lake, um, with the area um, as well. I mean, this isn't a service that we just provide for free. Um, so it's something that has to support itself over the years. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting out of the hole and looking for some additional capital improvements. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Commissioner Terrapani. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I, I had an opportunity to speak with uh, staff earlier or uh, last week, and they answered most of my questions as it relates to the fees. Um, I'm appreciative of the extra $150,000 a year. I think that that's going to go a long way to service the debt. <clears throat> but, Paul, you mentioned something about the debt amount and it being around 900000 And that's an uh, intergovernmental loan, correct? That's correct. I believe from sanitation fund. Right. And I remember it years ago being significantly higher. Do you remember what it started out at? Well, I know that recently um, Howard had a table on this, and it was up to 1.3 million. I was so, going to say 1.4. Yeah. So that's the reason I bring that up is because over the course of time, you know, 900 still seems like a big number, but it was close to a million four. So over the course of time, we have serviced that debt and brought it down significantly. And I think that's important to recognize. Thank, Thank you, you for bringing that up. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Donovan. 
Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Hunt, uh, for bringing this forward. You guys did a great job identifying the need for it and showing the comparisons to justify it. Uh, the course looks great. Uh, maybe we could use some of this money to get rid of the water hazards and move the holes a little bit closer for people like me that shoot over 100. Um, but no, seriously, I, I, I really appreciate our golf course. It's a great experience. Um, it's nice for somebody that stinks at golf like me to go out there judgment free. There's no private caddies or anything like that making me more nervous than I already am at the tee box. So um, I really appreciate the work you guys do and thank you for bringing this forward. Thank you, Commissioner. You know, I always like to bring guests to Tarpon Springs Golf Course because um, it's you get to keep your ball for a lot of holes. There's a lot of courses yeah. where <laughs> you could run out <laughs> before you're done. Thank you, Commissioner Matikiotis. Um, I also had an opportunity. Actually, they were uh, very forthcoming and gave me a call <laughs> to ask if I had any questions, so I appreciate that, Mr. Smith and Mr. Hunt. Um, and I, I, I was okay with the rate increases. Uh, I do have a couple of questions, though. Um, just, we are an enterprise fund. I, I want to make that clear that we have to pay for ourselves on that. There's no money coming from taxpayers. It's self-supporting uh, golf course. That's course. correct, yes. Okay, that's very important. Um, the other thing, as far as the percent membership and non-membership as far as clientele. Well, I'm sorry, what was the question the, again? The percentage breakdown between membership and non-membership people that actually tee off? Yeah, we currently have 65 annual memberships. So based off of what our annual rounds, I would say that's very minimal, probably they represent maybe 15, 20% of our rounds. Yeah, I would have thought it was. But now we, you know, we try to keep our membership to less than 100 because uh, as the city has uh, inquired in the past, they want to keep it a public, open to the public golf course. Right. We don't want to become a private country club or a semi-private country club. We saying. want to stay municipal. So we limit the, the number of annual memberships we sell. Yeah, I, 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 thought that, I, I thought that was pretty interesting. So the dollar increase is only going to affect 15 or 20 percent of the players. That's okay. correct. That will be not much of an increase at all. And of course, most of our annual memberships are Tarpon Springs residents as well. So we didn't want to put this burden all on their back. Um, the other thing, um, it, at budget time of uh, this next, I guess it's coming up, right, in another few months. I don't know if you're going to have enough time to do that, but I, I would appreciate if you um, would work with the city manager, at least look into um, creating a, a, an A to Z plan on uh, capital improvements there, other improvements that you want to do, not necessarily just for that one year or two years, but basically A to Z. And the city manager and I, I've had conversations that if you're looking at something that you may not be able to afford in five years, at least program it mm -hmm. and put that year in there that you want, I think. And also, as part of that, get the residents involved, your your clients, and find out what they want. I, you heard a couple of them this evening. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from a, a commission perspective, a couple of things may be a little challenging to do, but nevertheless, most of what came out with just a few people that got up and commented, I think, are excellent comments. So if we could at least do that, and then that plan you can actually share with your uh, clients that come in, those that are interested, of course, I think that would go a long way of making them feel good, too, as far as what their fees and their increases are going to. So I very much appreciate that, and um, I just... Uh, I, I think I explained to you the last time I played golf out there, right? We didn't have rangers and I, okay. Anyway, I, I love that golf course. <laughs> I've got excellent memories there. I haven't played there in a while for uh, other reasons, but anyway, <clears throat> thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Vatikiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lahusis? Yes, thank you. Um, Item 23 has been deferred, so that completes the uh, public hearing, and we go back where we left off, which is the uh, public comments on the items we will not be discussed this evening. If anyone has any comments, please come forward, state your name, your address for the record. You'll be given four minutes. Anita Prose, 901 Bayshore Drive. I'm coming back again with some items. And I can tell you how many times I've asked about it and there's been no action or consideration. We need to uh, honor Christopher Steeles. 
If you go to Tallahassee, the rotunda, it's beautiful what he has done about Tarpon Springs. Look what he's done at the hospital. We need to honor him in some way as our in-house, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, artist of Tarpon Springs. He has really promoted us in so many beautiful ways. So Mayor, before you get out of office, I would like for you to honor him here at the commission some way, whether it's a key or city seal plaque, something to let him know that he's very much appreciated. Between him and Liz Indiano, says Bill Arrakis spoke about her to our father, Rasakis did. We have two artists that really promote Tarpon Springs, and we really need to honor them. The second one is we need a lifeguard at Sunset Beach again. This is the fifth time I've been here. Sunday, it was packed. Kids are running all over the place. Even if we have a, a policeman in a uh, golf cart, they're running between the cars. The cars are backing out. Something bad's going to happen there. Kids in the water, adults, and the ski jets are coming up right where the people are. Even if you just have a lifeguard on weekends, it would be a help. It's for the liability of Tarpon Springs. It's dangerous out there. Um, again, the trees at Craig Park, number seven. This is the seventh time I've been up here. That's for out of piping or PVC, a Y to hold up the branches that are falling to the ground. They've grown so long. And the ones on the hill, and where the mermaid is, I watch. I walk out there every day. And I watch adults and children swinging on those low branches. They're going to crack. They're going to break. And they're going to kill the trees because insects get into those. They shouldn't be swinging on them or letting their children. But they do because there's no sign that says, please do not climb or swing on these branches. Those are historic trees. I don't know how much longer we're going to have them. But we need to protect those beautiful trees, and people need to stay out of them. This Sunday, four groups try, trying to play shuffleboard. This is number five that I've been up here asking about the shuffleboard. They're not marked. It's hard to see. I don't know why the roofing over the shuffleboard was taken down. I think it was to put parking there, and that fell through. People are standing there with umbrellas in the hot sun trying to play shuffleboard. They can't read the uh, markings. That's our recreation for elderly and non-elderly now. Clearwater's just had their uh, championship shuffleboard. They're starting up again. We need to do this in our park. It's been there. It's historic. People have come down here. Now younger people are playing shuffleboard. We need to take care of that. We need to put the roof back, have what we've had before. What does it take? Is it me that you don't want to give an answer to or do anything because I'm a pain in the butt over this? That's what I think it is. But I'm going to keep coming back and coming back till these things are taken care of because they're small things, but they're important to the community. What does it take to get it done? I don't know, Mayor. And I hate to put you on the spot, but we need to take care of what we have. We need to take care of the community. The beach is very, very important. And I'm worried about someone getting run over by a car or getting hit out there, or getting hit in the water with the, uh, uh, the air uh, scooters. Thank you. Very dangerous. And it's on your head. Next speaker, please. My guy's the 1515 Riverside Drive. Somehow, I don't know how I seem to follow Anita up and follow off with the beach line. Um, I was at the beach the other day, and I kind of don't remember. I thought we had decided that we were going to put a handicap ramp out for people. And I, if it's there, I don't see it. So I don't know if it just slipped someone's mind or was it ordered, but when I was there, I kind of felt a little funny that we had to be six months or nine months ago, we kind of spoke about that. And I just don't know what happened, where it disappeared. Was it something we were not going to buy? Or 
I kind of thought we were that was in the bag that we were going to buy that to uh, allow people to get, you know, to utilize the beach. So that was it. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Do we have any other comments? Come forward, please. Okay, Peter Delacus, 514 Ashland Avenue. And just for a little reading, uh, Psalms, Psalm 1. I've kind of fallen in love with this, and I may have read it before you. But it does have a lot of symbolism for what we do here. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever he does prospers. But not so for the wicked, they are like chaff that the wind blows away, Therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. It's interesting that uh, what I was wanting to talk about, it's kind of been brought up a lot. Latest Florida trend. Latest edition, and look who's on it, Chris Still, Chris Still, Chris Still, interview. They do this every so often, and I'm going to read a few things here of what he said. Our first house was in a grapefruit grove. Then when we moved from there to Tallahassee, we lived in an apartment house near a creek and some woods where I would explore and catch newts under rocks. When we came back to Largo, the grove was gone, developed. And when we got back to Tallahassee, the creek was gone. A mall was on top of it. Father James, he was talking about the play, Blessed Earth, Blessed Plot. Here's another thing that's kind of interesting. I designed a box that enables me to sit inside it and paint underwater Florida scenes. I was in my box in Homosassa Springs, and I'm painting, and this manatee comes by and is swimming circles around me, looking at me, and I'm looking right into this manatee's eye. Florida is such a sacred place. Florida is such a sacred place. Now, God gave us this earth for us to take care of it, not to abuse it. So, I will paint you another picture. Where will your legacies be on that mural 20 years from now? Will it show the addition of apartment buildings? Or will it show forest and natural lands and preserving our wildlife? You have this destiny in your future to decide to right the wrongs that have been done. You have a chance to speak out and say, yes, I may have faulted in my decisions. And Lord, please protect me and give me righteousness in heaven, for I know what I have done is not right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Do we have any other public comments? Phil Scandalaris, 935 Bayshore Drive. 
Uh, I would just like to uh, thank City Manager LaCourus for the town hall meeting uh, that he uh, hosted the other night. It was great, excellent that we got some community engagement. Being able to vote and seeing it on the screen live, that was, I've never seen it before. I thought it was really good. And uh, I think we need to keep doing that, getting to, you know, enable to have some city engagement in our uh, meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? We hear none. Mayor, may I offer something, please? Um, city Manager, of course, if, I think it was an excellent question about the beach mats. We just dealt with those two or three weeks ago. Could you just give a, just a quick update? I know it's important to a lot of people. It is, but we have a large uh, agenda that we need to it's go. It's just going to take 30 seconds, Mayor. We probably take spend more time talking about it than is up. Yeah, 30 seconds. I can do it. Um, we got a grant um, to do those all over. There's five beaches, I think, that were included in the grant. What they have is they're held up with a problem with permitting. Um, our contention is ours doesn't need permitting, but but they're cautious and they want to work with uh, the state agency that they're working with, Florida Wildlife, what it's called. So they're trying to work out discrepancy on permitting of all of them for coming in one in the grant. So we're at the mercy of the group that uh, we got the grant from, and I'll be talking with them again. But that's what the holdup on the five beaches, including ours, which got the grant uh, to have those mats. Thank you. Thank you. We're now going to the uh, consent agenda. I don't do. No, item number one is the satisfaction release of lease. Number two is the attorney fees. A, Trask Dynog, invoice February 4th, 2022. B, is Johnson & Johnson, invoice 8965. Number three is the special events. A, Art of Health. And B, is Easter Extravanza. And C, is St. Nicholas Orthodox Procession. Number four is to authorize execution of grant funding contract for water conservation program phase three. Five is the award file number 220092 NSAS single source purchase of uh, centrifuge decanter original equipment manufacturer parts and services. The award file number 220091 NAS single source purchase of uh, Floor serve and plunger pumps, parts, and accessories. And number seven is the award file number 220097, single source purchase of AWC A0782 corrosion inhibitor. And number eight is the award file number 220087, NAS single source purchase of chemical storage replay, replacement tank. And number nine is the award file number 220086BJL Pond Moint Service. And number 10 is the award file number 220085NAS Single Source Purchase of uh, Myers Pumps and Repair Parts. And number 11 is the award file number 220084NAS Ammunitions. And that's it. Are there any uh, items that you'd like to pull? Nine. Nine? Any other items? Okay, uh, <coughs> we go to the uh, public comments on the items one through 11 with the exception nine. Do you have any public comments? Okay, Theodore Locks 514 Ashland Avenue, first on number two, Trust to Know. You got copies of this. And keep hearing, well, we don't want to get sued. We don't want to get sued. Yet, if you look on your billing, invoice 7384, concerned citizens, Tarpon Springs, $444. Invoice number 73. 83, Concerned Citizens of Tarpon, $1,941.73. Invoice 7382, $333. And that comes out for a total of $2,718.73 just on this own voice alone. And also on here, there's also an invoice, uh, 7391, Tarpon Springs Colson, which from my understanding is a uh, 
a 163 suit filed by an individual citizen and on that invoice $4,484.50 for a grand total this month paid to Trasson and Owen Associates $7,203.23. Thank you commissioners for spending our money unwisely. Now, number seven and number eight. Purchase of AWC 0782 corrosion inhibitor. These are poisons that they put in our water to keep the pipes from corroding. Yet the next one is purchase of chemical storage replacement tank. And if you read the backup, it's for holding sulfuric acid, which is used pre-pumping into cleaning out some of the water minerals before it goes into reverse osmosis. I'll be glad to let staff explain all of that. But the point I'm trying to make is, why are we putting so much chemicals into our water? We're poisoning our residents. And you've got something a little bit later on the American Rescue Plan citywide advertising. We need to be changing our pipes out. I don't know how many times you've had people come up here talk about the lead pipes and the pipes and the pipes. The reason we're putting corrosion inhibitor into the water system is because the pipes are leaching out when we put the regular water through. We gotta find a better way to, to do this. It starts with repairing and replacing all of our infrastructure water lines. I know we got on here the Bayshore septic to sewer, and that's another issue. We can talk more about that. But the <clears throat> inflow is more important than the outflow. And I think Mr. Carr or Commissioner Carr mentioned that last week. So we really need to do this because not only if you fix the pipes, you don't have to put so much money into all these chemical inhibitors. And maybe we don't have to put so many other chemicals, fluoride, uh, I'm not sure which chlorine or what was the nitroaminide chloride that we were putting in the water before. It's just ridiculous. We're poisoning our, our residents. Thank you. Any other comments? Hear none. And item number nine, it was pulled by a commission of articulars. There would be at number 220086B. JL Pond New at uh, Moin Service. Do you want me to ask about that now? Yes. Um, I just wanted clarification on the budget that I had asked Mr. Herring. I, I hope he spoke to you about it, City Manager of course. Yes, I think Tom. Okay. About the funding. Oh, this is a question about what you talked about, about where you budgeted it within the budget, Tom. Yes, yeah, Tom Funch, Public Works Director. Yeah, if you're talking about the mowing services in the budget, <clears throat> uh, it's, we've been doing this for these 14, 15 years now consistently. Uh, the only thing is we did make a mistake on this over here, and the mistake was that over the previous years, we've always they used the previous year's budget as a template. This past year, we actually went and put a key to the budgets in. It's just one small item we happened to miss. <clears throat> so I went over, and we have monies within the, in the, in the, in the budget, the total budget, to transfer the money. We, to the which budget? Costs. The stormwater? Stormwater. Or? stormwater. Okay. Yes. But it's, it's not shown, but because there isn't that much? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's about $20,000. Yes. How sir. much? $20,000. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we, we can talk. I mean, some of the items in the stormwater in that specific line that was shown in the memorandum mm -hmm. had amounts less than 20,000. I didn't see mowing services, so I asked Mr. Herring and he agreed that it wasn't in the budget. Yeah, so it wasn't identified in the budget, but we have some money within the budget itself that we can transfer in to cover those costs. Resolution yes, at sir. some point? Yes, okay. sir. All right, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any public comments on the item number nine? Hear none. I need a motion for items one through 11. Motion approved. Second. Are there any uh, commission comments on this item? I just got a quick comment, Mayor. Go ahead, um, Vice, Vice Mayor, go ahead. There's a couple of special events that are being put on by the city. I think it's uh, good to recognize. One is the Art of Health, and the other one is the Egg Extravaganza. One's being held at um, Craig Park, and the other one's being held at um, Discovery Park, I believe it is. Um, so it is good to see these two things. Uh, the one of Art of Health has been delayed a couple of years or postponed a couple of years because of COVID. And it's nice seeing these events put on by um, different city departments uh, that we could celebrate and come together as a community and utilize our parks and really see some of the great things that are happening. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? 
Yes. Yep, Mayor, uh, I just I wanted to point out that we do have an active uh, water line replacement, the galvanized pipes. I know there's a couple of ones in our old neighborhood that were done because of yellow water coming through and a couple of others that I'd received from um, residents. And I can't remember the exact amount, but if it was over a million dollars, is that correct? Okay. It was, it was, we're spending over a million. It, uh, good, uh, that's a good number, right? A million. It's, we're spending over a million dollars a year to replace pipes uh, galvanized with PVC. So I just want to mention that. Thank you. Thank you. And also, there will be a future agenda item on it, probably within a month or so. Uh, Mr. Smith is getting some information to present with you. As we anticipate, this will be one of the items for the American Rescue Fund. So Mr. Smith is preparing son, probably April or May. We'll be, we'll be talking about that whole area and stuff as you make the decisions on the ARPA money. So that will be coming back to an April or May agenda. Thank you. I'd just like to add that. Uh, Several years ago, actually about five, six years ago, we started this program to replace the old pipes. We began this program with uh, $500,000 uh, $500, and then we grow as we, uh, as we go. So we replace, replace a lot of pipes. Also, we have a program any time that we repair any street, we're replacing the pipes underground. <coughs> any other comments? Roll call, please. Commissioner Vadikiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lahuzis? Yes, thank you. Okay, now we're going to the uh, special consent agenda. The item number 12A is to approval of pro uh, projects to be funded by the American Rescue, Rescue Plan Act. Actually, we have two items to discuss the, uh, the Bay Short Septic to a sewer project and also the uh, citywide advertising uh, marketing. So uh, uh, items 12A and 12B are related, will be discussed together, but we're going to vote separately. Uh, staff report, Mr. LeCours. Yes. Um, when I brought this item to you before, there was five items that we asked for for immediate funding with ARPA. Uh, two you gave to us. Um, a third one, which had to do with paving, I've been able to incorporate within the regular budget. So that left these two items um, from our request, the, um, the Bayshore Septic to Sewer Project and the City of Wise Advertising and Marketing. Um, I was given direction by the commission to go to do some more public engagements. Um, what we have done is we have had another meeting with the Budget Advisory Committee we had a meeting specifically to the septic to sewer, and it was one of the priorities of the sustainability committee. And we had the uh, town hall meeting where that subject was, was brought up and one of the items um, brought up. Um, next meeting, we're gonna go over that town hall meeting. Um, what you have on the dais um, is one of the areas we covered at the town hall meeting, which was the ARPA funds. Um, at that meeting, we gave the public some time to till today at noon, I think, to do some additional input. Um, on your dais is the current input for those projects. And again, next meeting we'll have agenda item to talk about the results of the town hall meeting for this and for the, uh, the West Tarpon Avenue and what to do with that property. But as I predicted when I brought it to you last time, it hasn't changed the two number one projects that we have we need to do. The, the Bayshore Septic Sewage is finishing something we promised probably over 10 years ago, I believe, of, of doing the entire Bayshore, which we had to do in pieces. We have one piece to go. This would move it up for a potential 2024 time frame to do to beginning now. Um, why that also helps us is because what follows, and if you remember the project, we started off with a Lake Tarpon area, and we did like three phases over a long period of time. Seabreeze was the second. We're almost, hopefully, um, done with laying the lines or preparing the sea breeze. Bayshore was the next one. Um, the other thing it does by moving this up and completing the Bayshore project is the next area we have to go is Florida Avenue. And I think that was predicted to go forward in, you know, in 2026 to begin on. We hope with some additional ARPA money that we'll talk and we'll rank with the rest of the projects. We really, this will help us by doing this project in the ARPA funds. 
this steps up that money that we have dedicated in the fund um, to begin the funding for the Florida Avenues projects, which are in two phases, and uh, we can bring back and talk at another meeting or pause here really fast. So it not only gives us a project two years early that we can complete a 10-year process and do Bayshore, um, that began, I think the mayor was on, just got in the commission, I just become city manager. So not only are we finishing that one out, but we move at the timetable for Florida Avenue, which again, all these areas septic to sewer are, are sustainability projects, are projects for the pollution of the environment. They're, they're very, very important. If you remember when the storms came through, Tarpon Springs was one of the lowest communities of dumping any sewer into our waterways um, above a lot of other cities who had a lot of higher supposed sustainability ratings than us. This further completes the project and, and gets our areas near the water off the septic tanks. So it's gonna remain, as long as you go as far as staff is concerned, the number one project to do. Obviously, the important of the second one, which is the advertising for our businesses. This is one of the major emphases of the ARPA funds to help businesses. And what better than, than getting this started as the off season? As you know, off season comes after Easter. We need to embark on this advertising and getting people and locals, whatever we need to do to get people to our businesses for business recovery. We need to begin that campaign now. Um, the holding off of this money um, gets us farther into the non-season when we really need to be advertising. So that's the importance of the second one. The business community was at the town hall meeting um, to relay the importance of this additional advertise to keep the revitalization of businesses. So those remain one and two. And, and for the reasons I've stated, um, I request that we <coughs> immediately fund those items. You'll still have 10 million, uh, a little over 10 million to to work in the future as we rank these projects. Um, the commission um, the, you know, hasn't come forward with what projects they want to include on the list. Um, we've got lists from the hospital. Before we compile all these lists and look at the money, um, these two are very important and I'd like to begin them now and I bring them back f forward to you for consideration and hopefully approval. Thank you, Mr. Lequeris. We're going to the public comments. Do we have any public comments on this item? Good evening, Craig Lunt, 743 Chesapeake. Um, don't know how to start. I'm really, really happy that we have this town hall. Um, it shows that we're actually starting to reach out to the public and that's a good thing. Uh, the unfortunate thing is 0.01% of the residents contributed to this town hall. We're talking 26 individual contributors. That's nowhere <coughs> near a wide enough reach to get any sort of consensus as to what the people of this town actually think. Again, it's, it's like asking the audience that's here normally every commission meeting. It's, it's about the same. Um, the other thing I wanted to comment about the town hall was the, the method of polling. Um, Mark, I'm not against the idea of putting sewer systems in Bayshore to replace the septic systems, I totally agree that it has to be done. However, when you went into the first question on this, on this poll, it was like, well, we need public health, emergency, and negative economic impacts. That's all that was said. Premium pay for eligible workers, revenue loss for traditional government services, and investments in infrastructure. Those were the four items that were given. Now, if I'm a normal citizen, public health emergency and negative economic impacts doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot to me. Yet in the second time, the second choice when you said, if they were used for public health and emergency, which would you prefer? Assistance to households was the top one at 32%. I wanna know why we chose to use public health and emergency and kind of bury that in the beginning instead of assistance to households, which people actually understand. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I have a U.S. Department of Treasury pamphlet in front of me. Two of the things of the, of the top things that they list on this are support immediate, immediate economic stability for households and businesses, something that we haven't addressed. 
and address systemic public health and economic challenges, which we really haven't addressed except for $48,000 for public safety. So we had a meeting about this, uh, I don't know, some time ago. It was decided at that particular time that we needed a plan. You had five or six items on this list. You got two of them approved. One was the police uh, station being redone. The other one was uh, public safety, a mental health issue. And then everybody, nobody's seen these unless they got the backup. All of a sudden, what happened to the plan? And all of a sudden, two more of your items seem to have been on the top. So this is just like, well, let's do a, some sort of a small town hall meeting and then just go ahead and get what I want anyway without any plan. What happened to the plan? Anyway, thank you. It's ridiculous. Next person, please. Good evening, Jackie Turner, 792 Chesapeake Drive. Um, yes, I think the town hall, it was great. We'd love to see more community engagement. I think we all would, um, but that is a process. And that's something I wanted to address is um, I spoke to um, the city manager and I spoke to Ms. Lemons about this. Um, when we're talking about our communications, marketing, advertising plans, this is an area, this is my wheelhouse and my professional experience. One of my concerns is that we need more of a comprehensive, holistic approach to an actual strategic communication plan rather than taking what I feel is the existing approach, you know, that's more of an ad hoc than strategic and really deliberate. And like I said, I spoke to Ms. Lemons, spoke to um, City Manager LaCourse. They were in agreement. Um, I, I know that they're doing, you know, amazing work, but I, I would like to see when we're asking for $100,000 for things, which these are very much needed, and what's on Ms. Lemons' list here, the $100,000 will help do some of these. It's not gonna do it all. Um, recognizing, again, you need a plan on there. And how we were looking in my discussions with her is your communications is kind of in three areas. One is you do have a PIO, your public information officer, which predominantly is focused on your police, fire, those you know general notifications and working with media. Um, and then what she's doing here wonderfully with the economic development, which is that external audience of your um, tourism and bringing businesses in. But the key part here that I think we're missing is how we're engaging and talking with our residents. And I have a lot of great ideas here. And like I told the city manager, whether, as you know, I'm a candidate for commission, whether I'm elected or not, doesn't matter. Regardless, I want to volunteer my services to work with your team to develop a plan for how you can more strategically work on communicating with our residents. It, some of this crosses over with what you have here in this plan using these ARPA funds. But this is a way that can help with that community engagement. So again, just like you know, Mr. Lunt was saying, we just reached a small number of residents. It's a start, but if we can keep that momentum going, and again, having more of a comprehensive plan instead of saying, I need this chunk of money, it's gonna be good things, but I'll show you the plan second. I feel like the order is backwards on that. So thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Bill Scandalaris, 935 Bayshore Drive. I'd like to thank all of my uh, Bayshore family for coming uh, to this meeting. We have uh, been waiting for sewer for a long, long time now. We, uh, I can tell you from my experience, I've had, when we have these high, these real high tides come in and it's been raining a lot, I get brown water coming through my, uh, my, my actual uh, tub and it's, 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 it's annoying. It's not, it's, it's, it's disgusting too and that we shouldn't be having to deal with this in 2022. And like the environmental aspect of it is, is a whole nother thing. Cause I mean, that's the runoff is going into the river. That's uh, unmistakable or that's unmistakable. We, we are tired, we're, we're us, us citizens are tired of it now. We just want to be like everybody else and have an actual sewer. Um, and actually speaking on the, uh, the advertisement too, just so you know that I'm not biased just towards Bayshore. Uh, I mean, we have to get into this day and age. I mean, you have to do, instead of putting your billboards in Ocala, you know, trying to get people in, let's do some SEO uh, work. Let's do paper clicks. We're actually pay for, you know, if you want to get, if you want to get people to come in, you're going to have to pay for it. You know, do Google is, everyone uses Google. Let's do your pay for ads. 
Thank you. Thank you. Next person. Hey, good evening, everyone. Phil Mangos, 911 Bayshore Drive. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk today. Um, I'd like to reiterate those comments about the, uh, the Bayshore septic to sewer project. I think it's a very, uh, very important thing. A lot of people are waiting for it. Um, at the town hall meeting, um, several different projects were um, brought up that were essentially competing for those limited funds. I would say this is the one thing that would produce the most direct benefit to residents that are already um, experiencing some issues or uh, are in the difficult situation of either presently um, you know, doing construction or in the future doing construction and will not be able to replace those, those septic tanks because of the um, pushback from, from the health department. Um, personally, four years ago, back in 2018, um, we found out that um, our tank is, would, would have to be replaced back then, um, and we, we haven't done it yet, but um, a lot of them are, are in that similar situation with a lot of the, uh, the houses there being uh, over 50, 60 years old, and the, the septic tanks um, also of, of the same age. So there, you know, there's a good chance that they're actually leaking waste into the, into the uh, river and, and causing uh, environmental problems. So um, I would be a big, big proponent of, of pushing that project forward. Thank you. Thank you. Next person. Thank you, Mike Eisner, 1515 Riverside Drive. Um, I'm not sure how many commissioners saw the town hall meeting. First, I wanted to thank you, Mark, for having it. It was an amazing, <coughs> amazing um, situation to get. The feedback of the residents is exactly what I stand for. Um, I, I was the person who brought up the topic, being I do knock on doors, um, to see the condition of some of the homes in Tarpon Springs, and truthfully, the people that were in the auditorium that day were not the people that were suffering, or at least suffering as much as the suffering that I've seen out in Tarpon. Um, one story I do want to bring up, and we should keep that in mind, there is a homeowner who, whose house was struck by lightning. Um, the place burnt down. The husband uh, lost his job during COVID. They didn't have any insurance. And uh, it, it's something that we should look at. Even if small um, donation to put them back in, um, I mean, that's, that's what this program's for. This program is to try to help the people that were massively affected by COVID. I know there's a, a lot of people that are affected, but we need to, as I said that night, we need to have some sort of an application process like you do any kind of a loan where you can ask people, how were you affected and what did it cost you? Doesn't mean we have to give them everything that they ask for, but it's worthwhile to at least get somewhat of a feedback and then have a committee decide what we're going to do. So uh, I think it's a great idea. Um, I don't personally need any funds from it, and most of the people in the room that night didn't need any funds from that. Um, but yet that was the people that were in there, you know, pressing the button to make the poll. Um, I, like I said, application is the only way you're going to get to the people that can't afford to come in here. Maybe with a Zoom call, it would have worked. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Scott Pickering, uh, 913 Bayshore. Uh, just uh, wanted to speak on the uh, septic to sewer program. Um, the, I think the biggest thing for me, uh, watching my next door neighbor go through the process of a full remodel um, and some of the videos, some of the photos that he showed me of the absolute just grotesque, disgusting uh, water that um, purged from the two septic systems that he had, um, it, it was, it, it just showed us how badly the, the river was affected or could be affected. And uh, to, to Phil's point, you know, there's a lot of older homes there and a lot of people that, um, you know, just haven't been dealing with this problem in this project and have put it off and put it off and put it off. And uh, to be totally honest with you, I'm a real estate agent. I bought a house on Bayshore three years ago. I didn't know there was a septic system. My, the MLS said that it, it was on sewer. 
The, uh, um, my, my survey did not show a septic system, so I was wildly surprised. And then watching my next door neighbor go through the process uh, of that remodel and watching what, uh, what the septic system was doing there, um, it, it just has to lead to believe that some of the other homes are affecting the river um, and where we live and play um, at a high level. Uh, if we don't move forward with this project. I'm super enthused to hear that the uh, uh, city manager and, and with y'all's support is really looking closely at moving this forward um, and expediting the timeline. So thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Next person. Peter Lax, 514 Ashland Avenue. <clears throat> Seems like uh, our city manager is willing to move into the 21st century. Had the IT people set up all the polling where everybody could do all their smartphone stuff and click on there. Yet, this commission did not want to expand the public access to their meetings. They don't want people calling in from their home, tying them up, giving them their comments, Zooming or phone call. Forget the emails. I'm not gonna worry about the emails reading. I can understand that. But when you've had an active meeting in the past, you've allowed people to reach out to you to share their concerns and then you cut it off, what does it show the people? As it was described, and I'm sure you can figure out the numbers of how many people were here and maybe how many people were maybe online and did some of the stuff remotely, but I'm sure it was less than 1% of the populace of Tarpon. And that's wrong that this board, in changing their rules, it makes it appear to the citizens that you really don't care what they say. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments on this item? If you are not, the chair will entertain a motion for the item 12A, which is the abatial septic to sewer project. Move approval. Second. And now we're going to uh, go to commission <coughs> comments. I'd like to start because this is something that, uh, as Mr. LeCour has mentioned, we began this project a long time ago. Uh, that was when I, fir I was first elected as a commissioner years back. Um, as the city manager stated, stated that uh, on December 7th, he proposed projects to be funded by the uh, American Rescue Plan. At that time, we uh, approved two of his projects that he uh, that he uh, rec he proposed. One was the uh, to do repairs on a safety building and replace the air conditioning for nine hundred thousand dollars. The second was the mental health uh, treatment and training, forty eight thousand. Then we directed uh, Mr. Lecouris that. Uh, the remaining projects we going to they're going to be addressed based on the uh, uh, based on the uh, public input that we're going to get. Uh, Mr. Lecouras, in your town hall meeting, I watched it on TV. You received very good input. Uh, it was very clear that the two projects that you're proposing tonight is what the people want. The uh, water and sewer infrastructure on Bay Short is a project that. Uh, we started many years ago, over 10 years ago, and I think it's time for that to be completed. Also, I'd like to comment on the uh, city advertising market, and this is very, very important to our local economy, and this is something that we need. Um, as some people in the audience says, $100,000 is not enough. Perhaps we can add some of that for later. But the remaining projects on the list, including the uh, finance help for the, uh, for the hospital, need to be back uh, to the board to be discussed and approved based on information and based on the uh, comments and the uh, input that we get from the people, from the public. So I am in favor for both of those 
the 12A and the 12B. Vice Mayor Carr. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, Mark, I, I would um, lean to say I can't support either of these tonight. I, I do like the ideas of both of them. Um, I recall from the last commission meeting that we gave you direction to come back with a plan. I would like to see a, a holistic plan of what we're going to do with all these funds. Is this funding septic to sewer a bad project? Not at all. Citywide advertising, mm -hmm. bad project? Not at all. Uh, I support these things, but I do want to see the whole plan. That's what I was expecting from the recommendation that the board gave you last month or the month before. Um, a couple ideas is also that, to understand that the, um, the septic to sewer plan is in the CIP of the sewer fund already. Uh, if we need to move that forward, we can move it forward with the septic CIP, or I'm mean, sorry, the sewer CIP. Uh, there's also state appropriations and state grants that will help pay for um, moving septic to sewer as well too which is something we haven't tapped into yet as a city that, I've, that I'm aware of. Um, there's over 20 plus miles of cast iron pipes that I'm aware of. They we're gonna have a report, like you said, uh, presented to the commission, um, talking about the asbestos water mains, um, our cast iron pipes that have rust in them that look like a clogged artery of someone that's been eating maybe hamburgers their whole life. Um, those are things that really concern me as a, as a resident, um, lived here my whole life. These are things that we need to address and really understand and educate the, the community and educate the residents about. Uh, I believe if the residents understood the condition of our water pipes coming to our homes, I think it would change their mindset on some of their priorities. Uh, I do think the um, hospital is something that we need to put at the top of the list as well too, but I mean at the end of the day, we need to have a plan at, um, and we need to have an idea of what we're going to do with the whole thing. I don't want to piecemeal it. I think that's part of the discussion last time too. I was happy to support the, um, the public safety buildings, a new roof, and then also some uh, additional, I think there was like training of some sort uh, for the firefighters and police department first responders. But as a whole, I'm not going to piecemeal this. I want to see the whole project. I want to say this is what we're going to do from beginning to end. And at that point, I'll make a decision, yes or no. But tonight, I can't make a decision on these funds because it's piecemealing it back to the same thing that we said we didn't want to do about a month and a half ago. So I appreciate the comments tonight. Like I said, I support these items that are on the list, but we need to have a full project list, not just piecemealing it, kind of limping along month to month. And then at the end of the, we're at the, we're at the end of it, we're going to run out of funds, and we're still not going to have some of the projects that we want to do. So thank you. Commissioner Terrapin. Thanks, Mayor. <clears throat> Um, as it relates to the sewer, I definitely uh, wholeheartedly support the sewer, uh, the, the sewer hookup, and I wanted to <clears throat> utilize the opportunity, as the mayor did, to give a little bit of history um, as far as this sewer project. Um, you know, unfortunately, this commission receives a lot of negative criticism, and there's a lot of uh, truths that are false truths. Um, so again, I want to use the opportunity to let y'all know that the sewer project wouldn't be possible had this commission or the previous commission, some of which are on the board, negotiated with the big bad developer uh, who developed Bayshore Heights to put in the lift station where it is located, which will better service this area. <clears throat> and it was done at the expense of the developer. So instead of being, you know, what could be a $5 million project or not feasible at all, it is because there was a lift station put in where it's at. And that came from the Bayshore Heights development. The mayor was on the board, I was on the board, and it was a development agreement that was uh, gone, gone back and forth. As a matter of fact, we turned down the different applications for Bayshore Heights, I think twice before we came to a reasonable agreement. So I think it's very important. Um, the commission has recognized it's been important for over 10 years. And uh, I'm excited that we're in a position to where the project scale is not what it would be had we not had uh, the foresight to negotiate a lift station where it's at. So now you know, and uh, look forward to getting the project done. Thank you. Commission Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to thank our city manager um, and Ms. Lemons for uh, holding the town hall meeting and getting some public input on this, but also for bringing these forward uh, just in the name of common sense, because if you have a big bucket of money funding the septic to sewer project on Bayshore, and then the feds come in and give us a big bucket of money to fund the septic to sewer on Bayshore, we don't lose that original bucket of money. We don't, use, we don't use that money that we were planning to spend on this, so we can use it for a different infrastructure project. So a lot of times people say we need to support infrastructure, Tarpon needs better infrastructure, we want to improve flooding. Well, I think this is a good opportunity to put our money where our mouth is. And if we use the ARPA money to fund the septic to sewer, that frees up a ton of money that we originally had budgeted for that. 
uh, to spend on a different infrastructure project. So I'm in support of both of these. Thank you. Commissioner <coughs> Yeah, thank you. Um, the, um, I, I know we're going to go through the town hall meeting, but it, actually I was up in the corner watching. I didn't vote, by the way. Um, I thought it was an excellent start to a process that's certainly going to grow. I think as the residents get comfortable with it, you're going to see a larger and larger number of people participating not only here but, but at home. And I'll have some questions concerning town hall meeting as far as especially the, the home uh, voting when we get to that point uh, next, I guess, next meeting. Is that what you said? Yes. Next okay. Meeting. Um, the, um, uh, I was in support of the Bayshore sewer project uh, last time before we got into the prioritization, and I, I, I do appreciate that we did push through to the town hall to uh, introduce this polling software, which, again, we're going to grow into it. So I, I think some good came out of that. Um, the... Um, the RFP for the, I guess my understanding is we're gonna approve this and then you're gonna come back with the plans uh, for the, uh, for Bayshore will actually just go out to bid and then you'll be coming back with an approval of the contract, is that correct? Yes, Okay. Well, design bid, yes. Right, it, we won't see the design, that's gonna be done, right. trans, okay. And then um, the advertising, as I understand, will see some kind of a plan coming back before that, or is that not the case? No, we, we can. I mean, we, we kind of know from, from the advertising we weren't able to do with what we've got budget. And this, this commission upped the budget for advertising. Um, as, as COVID hit, it, it was upped. But there are so many items that we've had meetings uh, with the merchants and other things about uh, advertising that it was just too costly to try to do. This will get us, again, and the importance of this is for business recovery from COVID is to get into this off season between Easter and November. And we have to start on that now. So we'd be glad to, to bring with you after going back to the merchants and the chamber and trying to go over, you know, where's the best bang for this extra money to try to, to, to really spread the word of coming to Tarpon. Um, yes, we can, bring, we can bring those back to you um, um, no, to give no, a presentation. No, I, I, I don't, I'm not looking for any kind of approval of the plan, but just that I guess we'll be saying something in the form of a contract to expend those uh, funds, is that right? Probably like, like if it's a contract with Tampa International Airport, which is one of the things we wanted to do, but, but was too costly what we had budgeted, right. or if it's additional billboards or, or whatever ever that is, you may see them depending on the cost. Uh -huh. A lot of it will look at the cost of doing the computerized things that were said. That's not a big thing of mine, but some of the things to generate in the computer age, those costs, a lot of the costs will be costs that I can approve and stuff, but uh -huh. we can keep you apprised and stuff. But uh, we're going to rank those working with the chamber and with the Merchants Association and, and get some of them going as fast as we can, again, to hit that lull between April and uh, October, November. Okay, and all these, these things that we're approving this evening are, uh, are going to be, uh, uh, the budget's going to be adjusted through a budget resolution? Yes, for the, for the ARPA money, we'll for, de they'll be dedicated okay. for a budget resolution. Um, the, the, the one thing on the... Um, on the Bayshore Drive, I'm, I'm, I, I would have been willing to support it last time as well. It's, it's just, uh, I, I, I'm glad that we got the uh, West Bayshore uh, subdivision, uh, Bay, Bayshore Heights uh, subdivision, the sewering in there. But I, I'd really like to start looking at uh, something like the sewering that we're doing. And you mentioned North Florida and then South Florida and, and just finishing off one entire area <clears throat> rather than, for example, uh, we when you look at the two rectangles in the back up, you've got one on one side and one on the one on the north, uh, east, and then one to the south. And I, these sort of things, I, and you know, when all the dust is settled, people are wondering where their sewer is after they did the Bayshore Heights. So I think in the future, if when we do something like this, we need to really work hard to try and um, finish off an area rather than just leaving remnants behind. So I'm all supportive of what we've got on the Bayshore. The only thing I want to ask is uh, when we do go out to bid on this thing, a contract goes back, I hope we do some changes to the way we are contracting, maybe through some means and methods. Uh, so maybe they are required to have the materials on hand to do the work rather than all of a sudden we wind up with a shortage of something and the contractor can't get the materials. That's 
our problem right now. So I, I don't want to subject the residents to anything prolonged. We're going to be talking about the other contract tonight, and I understand that. But just in the future, let's try and avoid that. Absolutely agree. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Well, we have a motion for item number 12A, which is the uh, Bayshore Septic and Sewer Project. So roll call, please. Commissioner Vaticiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? No. Mayor Lahousis? Yes. For the item number 12B, which is the uh, citywide advertising and market, I need a motion. Motion to approve, as per staff recommendation. Second. Is there any uh, additional comments? Roll call, please. Commissioner Vaticiotis? <clears throat> yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? No. Mayor Lahousis? Yes. And now we're going to take about 10 minutes break. We'll be back. Thank you. 855. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
We now reconvene the BOC meeting at 9.05 p.m. and we continue with uh, item number 13, which is to authorize execution of the uh, Community Garden License Agreement staff report. Good evening, Karen Lemons, Economic Development Manager. Um, this item is the approval of a new five-year license agreement with the Tarpon Springs Community Gardens, Inc. Um, the city had approved the initial five-year agreement in 2017, and the garden opened that same year. Um, the garden, as you know, is located just down the street on Ring Avenue um, on a parcel that was donated to the city by the late Jesse Burke. Uh, in the past five years, the Community Gardens Group has done a good job at uh, maintaining the garden, getting the garden developed, and has been um, utilizing it as per the, uh, the license agreement, and they would like to have another five-year term. So in your packet is the, the license agreement, um, some additional information as per the original RFP, and then we've got a couple uh, board members here from the Tarpon Springs Community Garden that are here as well. And with that, I'll answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Ms. Lane. We'll go into the public comments. We'll come back to you. We'd like to start from the applicant. Do you have anything that you'd like to say? If you would, <laughs> come to the podium. Please state your name and your address for the record. Hi, I'm Kathy Hallett, 305 Bay Street in Tarpon. First, I want to thank Karen Lemons, Tom Funchian, the city, and, and of course, Jesse, for giving our members this opportunity to learn and garden in this beautiful little yard at 116 North Ring Street. For the past five years, our members have organized and made improvements to the garden. We are very proud of our hard work and thankful for Karen and Tom's guidance and muscle. We have 24 beds and 21 active gardeners, and we wish you all would take a walk around our garden and see the beauty of the beds. Some gardeners grow from seed, others from plants. We have flower beds, some beds with berries, others with vegetables and herbs, some with it all. We learn from each other with our meetings and work parties. Our shed was a donated from the Banther family, and our wonderful park benches was a donation from Ethan Proper as his Eagle Scout project. I am asking as spokesperson for our members to renew our license agreement for the next five years and our members will maintain and enjoy the city property as community gardeners to the best of their ability. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do you have any? No. No? Good. Do we have any other public comments on this item? I hear none. The chair will retain a motion. So moved. Oh. Second. Are there any uh, commission comments? Vice Mayor Carr. Yeah, um, I love community gardens. It's a, uh, <laughs> sorry, I was pressing the button the same time you were. Turn off. Um, I love community gardens. I love driving by this community garden. It's something I enjoy slowing down looking at. Um, I, I would, if I could ask the city manager if there's any opportunities to do any other community gardens throughout the city. I know some, someone brought up some opportunities along Diston, just north of Mears by the church. Um, if there's anything on the west side of Tarpon that we could look at as well too, as an opportunity on maybe a city plot somewhere. Um, but I am full support of this. I, I think it's a great thing to have, mm -hmm. and I appreciate the work that you all do there um, to, to have your gardens. Thank you. Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I just want to say this is a really cool thing for the community, and I appreciate the hard work you guys do to organize it and put it all together. So thank you both for being here. Thank you. Well, I believe this is very beneficial to our community, but I'd like to ask Mr. Trask if he wants to comment on the agreement. So the agreement is very similar to the prior one. There were some deletions for work that has already been accomplished. Other than that, it just um, provides for a five-year period of time. It is a license agreement. It is revocable. Um, but otherwise, um, um, I don't have any other comments. Okay. Renewable without uh, board action. Is that correct? It's for a five-year period of time but it is revocable. 
Oh, revocable. Yes. I'm sorry. I yes. misunderstood. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Vaticiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lahousis? Yes. Next is item number 14, the award bid number 220043, BJL <coughs> Scale House Relocation in Mears Boulevard Roadway Improvements. <coughs> Mr. Lecouris. Yes, um, Hello, Nick. We're going, Mr. Macris is going to be presented. Bob Robertson. In fact, Nick, I think, has got three of the next four items um, in, 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 in standing in for Mr. Robertson. Um, we also have Ms. Lewis in the audience if there's any questions about the bid. But I wanted to, Nick to start off a little bit and go over the project um, that, that you're approving the bid for and the scope of the work. Uh, you know, especially with a lot of the extras that we're getting into this project um, for the section of mirrors that we took over and uh, was our obligation to complete. So Nick, would you kind of go over that first and then we'll see if there's any bid questions itself. We'll have Janina address them. Sure, thank you, Mark. Good evening, Ma Mr. Mayor and uh, Commissioners, uh, Mr. Trask and Chief Young and everyone. Uh, for the record, I'm Nick Macris, Project Supervisor for the, the Project Administration Department. Um, for this item, staff is asking the board to award construction contract to Augustine Construction in the amount of $959,826.78 for the Scale House Relocation and Mears Boulevard Roadway Improvements Project. The project consists of a new Scale House building for customer transactions, relocating the existing scale, Yardway Scale, um, installation of new landscaping at the facility entrance as well as along Mears Boulevard right-of-way, associated irrigation, new sidewalks and ADA ramps, painted crosswalks, and fencing. This project is important and timely as it will consolidate the city's public yard waste operations in one convenient location on the south side of Mears Boulevard. The existing scale house building will remain in place and operational and will serve future public works operations. The project will be funded primarily from the sanitation budget and help clarify that uh, it's the city solid waste garbage collection fund um, with partial funding from the tree bank as previously directed by the board. Uh, thank you and with that I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have on this item. Thank you Mr. Mackis. We're going to public comments on this item. Do we have any public comments? Please come forward. Good evening, Craig Lunt, 743 Chesapeake. I'll try to be a little less passionate this time. I think this is a great project and it's much needed for the city. Um, the only comment I would have is, in my head I overall see sort of an extension to the trail from distant down, down mares. So I would maybe like to, to, to think about a sidewalk being maybe a, a wider vehicle for, for transportation or for multimedia transportation than, than just a normal four foot sidewalk. Um, since it's probably going to be used by the residents up in the, uh, the distant and, and mayor's crossing area to get down to the trail, um, which means a, probably more vehicular traffic than just, just a pedestrian crosswalk. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments on this item? Hear none. The chair will retain the motion. Second. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Mr. Macros, thank you for giving us these presentations tonight. Of course. And we uh, discussed this project in the past, but a couple questions I would like to ask. What type of uh, construction is going to be the scale house? Is that going to be a cement block or a prefab? It's going to be a prefab. Okay. Yes. And, and, and what type of, is that going to be used as a work center as well, or just going to be a place where you can have, store the, uh, the scale? Well, I think the new building will actually serve as the, the new office building for customer transactions between city employees and obviously, um, you know, folks uh, with, with, at the yard waste facility. The previous, the former building will just serve as, I believe, like a little satellite office for public works uh, personnel. Okay. Is that going to be a space for the, for the employees to have a break? Mm -hmm. 
to uh, when the time comes to relax? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, my next question will be: What were you going to do with the existing building? That's what I mentioned. Yeah, the existing building will remain in place. So the scale that was um, is adjacent to the existing building is getting refurbished, recalibrated. Uh, I think it's right now in the in the shop, if you will, um, from the the calibration company. That will be repurposed and reused uh, in the new facility on the south side. The existing building on the north side of Mears Boulevard will remain a satellite office for possibly, you know, public works personnel breaks, um, you know, uh, satellite office meetings, what, whatever, you know, they, they feel that's appropriate for that office. Okay, thank you. Can you tell us about what buffer you're going to provide to the neighbor church, the uh, Mount Moriah? Yes, so <coughs> we, we've um, partnered up with Mount Moriah. They, they've expressed a few concerns to us um, with the recently um, completed uh, Mears Boulevard extension uh, for safety and for, for also noise barrier. So in this project we added as an additive alternate um, additional fencing, a privacy fence, uh, six-foot vinyl, vinyl PVC fencing with um, roll, roll-off gates okay. to allow for access. There was also a lot of challenges in dealing with uh, Duke Energy because you may know there's a um, high uh, voltage transmission power corridor through there. Mm -hmm. So they're very restrictive on what um, structures, permanent structures will go w in that easement. So um, we've, we've got the approval from Duke Energy and uh, Matt Mariah has been patiently, um, you know, awaiting this, this uh, fence that we are adding in this project as well. Good. Thank you, Mr. Muckers. You're welcome. Uh, Vice Mayor Clark. Hey, yeah, yeah, Nick, thanks for the presentation and the uh, city manager working on this project. I know this has been a big project to finalize it for this corridor for the city. Uh, I, I do support this fully. Uh, I think it's needed. Uh, I do want to just touch base on the total linear feet of uh, sidewalk. I saw it's six foot wide. Um, Nick, do you know off, to, it looks like about 3,100 linear feet. Do you know if it's a give or take? Does that sound right? I'll, I'll take your word on it. Yeah, Commissioner Carr. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, so the, the sidewalk, and this kind of would address um, the public comment earlier from the gentleman in the audience. Um, yeah, we, we did um, identify the need for uh, it is going to be a safe routes to school. Um, so we are going to be installing sidewalks all the way f from Diston Boulevard, which um, also included some sidewalks in our recently completed, or actually, we're wrapping up at this point the Mango Street project. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have some sidewalks on the, both the north and the south side of, uh, of Mears Boulevard, all the way to Levis. Um, and then from that point, we're gonna have sidewalks on the south side only uh, to connect from Levis all the way out to Safford Ave and the Pinellas Trail. Okay. Um, maybe Ms. Lewis could help me out with this, and I know I didn't ask this question in advance, but has anybody compared the pricing? I know. The, the current pricing where we're at today that we approved a few months back was about 27 and change or 28 and change per linear foot. Um, that's for four foot sidewalk. This is a six foot sidewalk. I'm not sure if anyone did any evaluation to say, well, how many linear feet do we have in this project and compared it to what the, the current bid is to say, well, we don't have to do this alt bid. We could decide not to do this alt bid because we could go out and bid it out for the sidewalks a separate one and save sixty thousand dollars something like that do you know if that was done at all it's a great point and yes uh, yeah to your point it has been looked at it has been evaluated okay um it, not only the sidewalks and the concrete work but um also uh, some additional components the landscaping and the irrigation as well we do have a city contract with uh, some landscapers uh and and to that point um you know, this Augustine Construction Company, we do have a good uh, track record. We're wrapping up a, a project with them currently. Uh, they will, it's not their niche, it's not their specialty to do concrete work, so more than likely they will be subbing that out to a, a more specialty contractor. Um, obviously, there will be a little bit of markup to that, but we feel it's definitely within line of uh, what we would have to do, you know, to actually do a whole separate uh, contract to add that, um, those, that sidewalk to that. So okay. it's a lot easier to just include it in this project. Great, no, I appreciate the details behind that, Nick. Um, what about like timeline? Is there a, a start date, time ending date? Uh, what does that look like from a staff perspective? 
Uh, well, I've already uh, reached out to the contractor to kind of uh, early indication that, you know, just kind of get their, um, their scheduling, their resources, uh, if they're um, ready to, to go once we have our pre-construction meeting scheduled. Um, this, this contract has 150 days, contract days, to have it complete. So I'm anticipating, you know, if, if uh, the board approves tonight, uh, we could probably um, schedule a pre-construction meeting in the next few weeks and hopefully start construction I would say, you know, maybe sometime next next month. Great. Is there a specific order that you guys would go after? Is it sidewalks, landscaping, you, scale you know, house? Or um, it's a, that's a great question. And um, obviously that's going to be dependent on the contractor and, and their resources, their manpower. Okay. I will say this, and I, I, I'm glad you brought that up to remind me. I think it's good that we, we try to, um, not convince, but uh, maybe suggest that they could sequence maybe the, the landscaping early to kind of get that you know out of the way it's not it's not in the way of the actual construction of the the new facility the yard waste scale house facility um, just just so it has some time to kind of the establishment period is, is crucial uh rainy season will be coming up so hopefully you know we could get that done out of the way and uh maybe help beautify you know the mirrors boulevard great um Mark, what about uh, Dr. Diamandis? Wasn't there some discussion about a sign there? Is that up already or no? No, but that's what in, in this construction project, as we as it goes and stuff, that will be part of the completion of this. We will have the memorial sign and everything ready to set in um, um, during the course of this construction. So when we open it up, the dedication will, dedication will come as we open that portion of the road up, and uh, the dedication of that will include the Dr. Diamandis um, um, plaque for the Memorial Highway plaque that we talked okay, about. Okay, great. Um, I don't have any further questions, so I'm looking forward to it, Nick. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Terpe. Thanks, Mayor. Nick, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you uh, since your son was blessed and caught the cross, so congratulations you on too. that. Thank you so much. Um, appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, you're a great second to Bob Robertson, who we value so much. Um, <clears throat> In my original notes, I did not see this breakdown uh, of the bid tabulation, so I'm appreciative that that was included in the backup. A um, couple questions. Um, so I see now what each line item is costing us. Um, so I don't have as many questions as it relates to like, you know, how much for the sidewalks, how much for the landscaping, et cetera. So I, I see that now. Mm -hmm. um, but as it relates to some of these items, because it seems like a lot of money, a million bucks, right? But basically, the scale house relocation and all the miscellaneous work that's associated with that is basically 625,000, um, and the site construction is like 600,000. So, on some of these items, and I know you know there's a certain amount of economies of scale and cost effectiveness that goes with it, but clearing and grubbing for $66,000 when we have you know massive equipment out there seems like we might be able to do some of that. On our own now, I know that you know I'm not trying to rebid this. I'm just talking out loud, right? Right, right. Uh, I mean, a mobilization. I guess that's how contractors do it for 35 grand. I mean, do you want to mobilize or not? Why you you know do you want to come do the job or not? Why are you charging us you know 10 percent just to mobilize? But again, I guess that's that's how they do it. Um, you know, some of the miscellaneous expenses are are what they are. Uh, but to me, the grubbing stuck out, and I wanted to mention that the mobilization stuck out. I mean, that, that in itself is $100,000, you know, those two line items. Um, and then just to highlight uh, for the public, the landscaping in the Mears Boulevard right away is, is, a, is a bid alternative for $137,000, and the sidewalks with the curb ramps on Mears Boulevard and Levis is $172,000. Um, and then, you know, some of the other stuff is miscellaneous. The, the PVC, PVC fence is 18. So, <clears throat> you know, it definitely adds up to make a million dollar project. Um, but it just, it seems like a lot of money. Um, I'm glad that it was broken out to where the commission can see that. And if the public is interested enough that they can look at this in the backup as well. Since you're up there, do you have any thoughts on the mobilization fee or the clearing and grubbing? Um, I'll, I'll say you're exactly, you're spot on with, uh, you know, that's how contractors do it. Um, I, I can't really speak on behalf of whether it's high or low because um, if you compared uh, all the bid tabs with all the, all the three, um, you know, uh, contractors that we received, 
Um, you know, some are high, some are low, some are um, way low, some are way high. Sure. Uh, I, I have a feeling um, I'm not a contractor myself, but I know for a fact, you know, that's a lot where they, you know, for overhead, for just the typical running of their business sure. um, is the mobilization. Uh, a lot of times, you know, clearing, grabbing the, the simple um, lump sums where there's not a specific quantity associated with it. That's how they, you know, for, for just basically the everyday running of a business, that's how I think they, they view that, okay. those line items. Two other things. Uh, Augustine Construction has treated us well in the past, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, they've been low bidder on, you know, numerous projects in the last three or four years. Um, I know that they're a local company, mm -hmm. even though it, their address looks to me like it might be unincorporated. Um, so my question is, do we give them any kind of bid, uh, I forget what we call it, but we basically give a local company like what a five percent preference. Preference? Are we giving Augustine that or no? I mean, I know they're low bidder by far, but I'm just curious. You know, I'd have to <coughs> defer that to our um, procurement director. I really couldn't honestly um, accurately answer that. So I don't know if Janine, if you could answer that for us. Janina Lewis, procurement services director. On um, normally on construction projects, we do not give a local preference, just due to the competition that we try to strive for in the pricing. Uh, in this particular bid, there was no local preference. Gotcha. Um, and then, was there any uh, consideration? I see that we have uh, it's like thirty-five thousand for a lift station. Any analysis as to uh, sewer in the area? I'm sure the school has sewer, right? The school does have, you know, so basically we, there is a little bit of a challenge, as you know, the, the history of this, of this site. Um, we have a very, I wouldn't say delicate, but it's a geomembrane that it's, it's highly um, protected and permitted by the DEP. Mm -hmm. So um, we were actually anticipating this project um, when we were dealing with uh, the extension of Mears Boulevard, you know, the, the developer's portion of that project. Mm -hmm. We actually were proactive and we, we, we extended some um, sleeves so basically like, you know, empty pipe sure. across and underneath the roadway. So obviously it wouldn't breach the, um, the geomembrane. This one in particular, um, we have very specific um, specs, specifications on uh, what we expect from the contractor with, um, you know, having to be very ginger when it comes to um, installing that wet well for the, for the lift station. But ultimately, really, that lift station is just to have, um, you know, for the in interior of our, our new building. Yeah, right. So it's just going to take the waste from the one building Correct. and go and, and hook up to the line. Bring, bring the it school. across. Yeah, bring it across. So, so in a nutshell, we weren't able to run a sewer line because of the sensitivities with the land? No, I mean, yeah, we don't have this. There's not a gravity. It's, it's oh, there's not enough gravity. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be under pressure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Nick. You're welcome. <clears throat> Commission Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I, I had a question. This may not be for you or something that you can answer, but. Uh, seeing, I think, number 17 on our agenda tonight is uh, kind of discussing what happens when a timeline gets disrupted. I just wanted to ask kind of like a high-level overview of what our avenues are to hold them accountable. Because is, is the timeline 150 days? It is, yep. Okay, so 150 days. So I, I guess kind of what, what's the scenario there where if they're lagging behind or if they don't meet that timeline, what our avenues are? So yeah, 150 days for substantial completion. Um, we, do, um, we do have the... Um, ability as the city in our procurement and our, our contract language states that uh, if that milestone is met and um, obviously we, we have not achieved substantial completion that we have the ability to um, uh, address or uh, liquidate damages in the tune of I forget what it is for this project would start accruing each and every day that project is not complete. So um, we have been proactive and I'm sure there's going to be some questions for item number 17 that I'll also be here to um, answer, because um, that's one that you know, we've <coughs> identified that the schedule um, has been, um, for lack of a better word, it's, it's, it's way behind schedule. So um, there are some opportunities that we've already uh, worked with um, the contractor's owner, the, the, their surety, um, their, their counsel, uh, to try to get them back on track you know, in a recovery plan. Uh, for this one in particular, um, we could I just identify if the schedule looks to appear that you know it's not it, they need some help we could try to work with them a little earlier on to see like how we can prioritize certain things you know that they can maybe hit fast track okay you answered all my other questions too so thank you very much no problem Commissioner, uh, has your son come off cloud nine yet <laughs> 
I think his celebrity status is kind of waning a little bit, but I don't know. He, he's still yeah. kind of playing it for all well, these good for him. It'll last for life. I'm so, so proud of him. Yeah. Thank Congratulations you. again. Um, the, the, I, I was looking at the bid spread on this thing from 960. Up, the next one is 1.5, about a half a million dollars more, and then the next one is another 100 and a half. Um, I, I, I'm <coughs> satisfied. I'm comfortable, with, uh, especially when we've got a local guy here. Uh, he's going to have. He's a neighbor. <laughs> they're going to have to live here, so they're going to have yeah. to perform. I feel good about that. Um, and thank you for the uh, layouts um, on welcome. that. I'd ask the city manager about that. And um, the question I had was on a couple of things, was the, um, the bicycle lanes that we had talked about. And I don't know if the city manager got with you uh, earlier. Uh, yeah, with Bob. And then, yeah, Bob actually just let me know that, you know, that I guess it may be coming up. So there is going to be, a, a, um, Mears Boulevard is wide enough. Uh, we are going to be putting bike lanes in. Um, and also for that connectivity to the, the trail. Right. Uh, right now, if you, if you know, um, we're wrapping up the, Mar the Mango Street project. Uh, we also have uh, bike trails there to help, you know, try to help uh, pedestrians and, and bikers. Yeah, and that'll be great. Is to, it on to both get to the, sides to get or to just the trail. one side? Uh, for this one, we're going to have on both the north, both, both on sides. No side. both okay, sides. great. And up, I believe. Up north of Levis, I think, is that the break where you have the sidewalk on the one? Uh, north of Levis, uh, I'm sorry. or east, east of, of Levis, yeah. we have sidewalk on the north side of Mango, um, and for this particular project, um, west of Levis, uh, we have sidewalks on both sides, both the north and the south sides, and then we're going to have a crosswalk right there at Levis to help the kids, mm. you know, if they are on the south side, cross the street safely, uh, the north side, uh, from Diston, or, yeah, I'm sorry, from Levis to the trail to Safford, uh, the, the sidewalk is just going to be on the south side due to some constraints on the north side with some stormwater infrastructure, some wetlands, right. you know, so it's just going to be, the sidewalk's going to be on the south side. And bike lanes on both sides all the way yes, through? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Um, and then um, we had talked about irrigation at one time, and I don't know whether we looked, I don't see it in the plan. Is that correct? I that's, don't in, that's included, and actually we verified um, the plan. Um, didn't specifically state um, irrigation, but we actually confirmed with uh, the winning contractor um, that you know he, uh, he understands years. that there is uh, irrigation associated with the landscaping, okay. and, he is, and, yes, and that will be uh, along all along mirrors, um, all along mirrors, yeah, um, drip irrigation and bubblers, you know, with yeah. um, okay, that will be great. Yep. And besides the the palms, and then the um, I, I think it's the oh shoot. Zamia pluma, I guess it's a low yeah. They're, so note. they're both native. I think um, drought tolerant, lower maintenance. Um, you know, plants that'll help once they're established, they'll they'll be able to thrive and, there. And what about sodding? Um, is there any sod or anything sodding, like that? Sodding, I believe. You know, that's a good question. Um, it's in the plan. I know we're we're, we're putting um, some fire bush. Uh, it shows it's in the plan. There's sod. It's uh, yeah. It's uh, the Bahia grass, I think. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's 17,500 square feet. As far as irrigation goes, it's just going to be drip irrigation. Just for the plants, I'm not too sure if we're putting any rotors or spray heads for the for the sod. And usually, typically, Bahia is another native um, turf. So okay. once that's established, you know, all right, saves well, we'll some water. But given that the water's there, if I mean, I, I think in going forward in the future, I know it utilizes water, and um, but we need to have some of these corridors, and this will be a what I would I mean. If you could describe it as a scenic corridor, it's certainly going to be an undeveloped corridor given our our uh, uh, our, uh, our field there and everything. So, I'd, I'd like to see it dressed up a little more than than not. So we're we're spending some money on it. So I'm 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 happy about that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Vadikiotis. Yes. Commissioner Donovan. Yes. Commissioner Terapani. Yes. Vice Mayor Carr. Yes. Mayor Lewis. <coughs> Thank you. Next is item number 15, commission input on Orange Street design. Staff report, I guess, Mr. Meckers, you're the front, sir? Yeah, before, before we start to go too so. far here, yeah. Yeah. again, for the record, Nick Macris, project supervisor for the project administration department. And for, the, for this item, uh, staff is requesting board input and approval to proceed with the design phase of Orange Street improvements between Pinellas Ave and Safford Avenue. Currently, um, we verified with uh, the city's finance department, um, $175,000 is budgeted for design of this project and 500,000 is budgeted for construction. 
And before we proceed with the scoping out of the design work uh, with our engineer of record, we want to confirm the, the board's preference for the design in, intent. Mm -hmm. um, two, op two options were presented in your backup for consideration. Option one is an in-kind brick replacement that would include an evaluation of parking options and potential sidewalks and ADA ramp upgrades as needed. Option two would basically essentially also provide for the brick, re brick replacement parking evaluation, but would also include consideration of streets, streetscape elements, including but not limited to landscaping improvements and other innovative possible um, elements. Both of these options would include an evaluation of utility needs, including replacement of drinking water pipes. There is, there is a water main uh, along, uh, along Orange Avenue. Uh, and also during design, we would seek public input on design options. And as brought up during tonight's earlier comments, uh, we will be doing this comp comprehensively in multiple approaches, uh, including a survey to provide input and comments throughout. Um, we're gonna do this pos possibly through the city website, um, you know, hard copy uh, surveys, uh, QR codes. There's a lot of ways we could probably get uh, and seek and solicit uh, public input on some of these ideas. And finally, in conclusion, we presented two discrete options uh, for you, very conceptual at this point, and variations on either option could be included in the final scope uh, based on your direction. So with that, thank you, and I'll take any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Good evening again, Mike Eisner, 1515 Riverside Drive. I looked over this project. Um, figure one and figure two are almost like comparing apples to oranges. Um, the figure one shows that we, going from curb to curb, it's about 60 feet. So I would give, give or take, you have about 50 feet wide. And right now, I just came that direction to come here to, to tonight's meeting. And you have parking right now on both sides. Going into figure two, we would be giving up parking on one side in preference to making trees and grass, and uh, which is all fine and dandy, but that's on major thoroughfare when we have First Friday. That's a street that most cars have to be detoured to. So looking at it from that aspect, um, I just can't see how we would try to fit 22 feet um, of two-way traffic. So tonight, driving through there it was literally a mess we had the uh, I don't know the name of it but there's a Greek organization there that was having a meeting tonight as they do um, and you couldn't get through the street for whatever reason um, people were parking on both sides you need the parking over there to um, just beautify the street it's a major thoroughfare the next topic we're gonna to be speaking about is how to move traffic through Tarpon Avenue. So here you have orange. The only reason people don't even go on orange is because it's like a milkshake going down the street. Um, so I believe that we should stick with figure one and not even consider figure two because I can't see making that street uh, narrower than it is right now unless we're gonna to look to make it a one-way street. So thank you. Meet at Frozen 901 Bayshore Drive. I just want to caution your decision on Orange Street. It's crowded on Sundays. <clears throat> the city parking lot cannot be utilized because people are going uptown to eat breakfast. They're going to the tavern and the other restaurant, and they're going to different places. So the city parking lot there is always packed. You narrow that street you have the cathedral. People try to go to church back and forth. You have the funerals there. You narrow the street, people are not gonna be able to get up and down the street. Just beautify the sidewalks, the lamp posts with flowers, and let it stay as it is. Just re-brick it, let it stay as it is, and uh, uh, don't put islands, don't do anything where it narrows the street, because you see pictures and how it used to look, but remember the pictures that we see even on Tarpon Avenue, the cameras weren't, aren't like they are today. 
And when they take the pictures in the film that they've had years ago, it makes everything look good, but it's very narrow. And uh, you've got to consider all of this because there's not enough availability to get to the cathedral. People come, go down Safford and go up Orange when the traffic is heavy. And uh, if you start cutting into the street, you're gonna hurt us. Paniyati Kuyas, 595 Peninsula Avenue. I definitely want to reiterate what some of the individuals set up here. We can't add this extra lip that we've been adding to roads like Court Street and Tarpon Avenue. We're taking away the width of our major roads in our downtown, and that's not what we want to do. We want to keep our roads as wide as possible, not as condensed as possible. So as this lip comes around, you're creating a very small walkway, just like or a very small driveway, which is about 22 feet wide, just like you did the Court Street, in which we destroyed it, and we didn't have to add the brick road back. So that's something to consider in the future. Absolutely, we need to do the brick road. Um, I see that we're adding this four-way stop sign area between the Hibiscus intersection. So it seems like we've tabled the ideal of closing Hibiscus permanently, which is good. And I do see a parking spot that you guys have located as a potential spot that sits right between the entrance and exit of St. Nicholas Preschool. And it's just not gonna work. Anybody who goes in and out of that parking lot, it has to be a small compact car right between the enter and exits for it to happen. And it's still very tight. What I would suggest is even possibly from figure one to figure two. It looks like the road's already narrow. You just can't see it as well from uh, the satellite image from figure one and how it looks extended down to figure two. Maybe set it back a little bit. Make the road wider going down. And let's try to keep our roads in our downtown historic area as wide as possible. Tarpon Avenue, I know we put the medians there, but we congested it all and you can't even turn, you guys get inside the turning lanes to turn north or south, and the turning lane's not even wide enough. The, car, the car's end actually sticks out pretty much in any car you use, so um, I get we wanna have that charm and look to it, but some roads need to stay as wide as possible for every reason and as historic as possible, so the brick road would be the best route. Thank you. Any other comments? Here none. The chair will detain a motion. Motion to give direction to staff of a combination between figure one and figure two. Okay. Second? Second. All right. Mr. Mackers, again, thank you for doing this presentation. I had the opportunity to speak to Mr. Robinson about the uh, project on option one and option two. Uh, since then, I also had the opportunity to speak to uh, some people there uh, from the uh, Prometheus uh, Club there mm -hmm. on uh, Orange Street. Um, questions that I have to ask and is how many parking spaces we're we going to lose if we select option two? I don't have that number right um, with me at this point. Um, obviously there's variations on, uh, and to clarify, the way it's, it's um, um, depicted in, in figure number two, um, the north side of the street has, you know, the, the tree wells and, you know, there actually is existing um, landscape uh, beds, if you will, all along um, mm -hmm. that north side over there. So it's not really adding or subtracting. Obviously, the evaluation of uh, the combinations of, you know, we've got to retain the functionality of making sure that we don't lose any you know parking spaces and obviously if we're going to improve some aesthetic elements to that yeah. i don't have the number of, of parking spaces there there could be creative ways and actually instead of uh, parallel parking to the curb um, some angled parking there's a lot of different options um, here um, that we could possibly uh, look into nick let me let me i was going to give a little introduction before you talk sure. don't hone yourself into those two options they were presented to 
elicit questions, what do you want to see in the design? There may be several, there's multiple options. I can tell you from the very start of this thing, my comment was we need to rebrick it nice, not, mar not do anything else with it with rebrick it because I think just from my eye and stuff, that may allow the most parking. Now maybe I'm wrong, we need to look at these other options, but it may be a simple case. These two, these two diagrams you have are some combination of things we've talked about. We're coming to you because when we go to get this designed, you know, we want to look at however many different options that this board may want to look at, that once we get them, we go to the people and have them look at so we can make a decision on how we want to go with this road. Are we more interested in which, which method is going to keep the most parking on the road? Are we interested in sprucing up in aesthetics? What's our interest? And our purpose of coming to here, obviously this board has started this idea and this board is going off. So we, before we get to the next phase, we wanted to get this board's input on what do you want in the designs to look at? Um, and, and the different things you want to look at. So it's not picking one or two or something like that. It's to hear what you have to say and then bring all those ideas, get it designed, and then really go to the people, go to the public, go to you, um, however we do it. I, I envision another maybe town hall type thing to talk about the design options um, for the people to input, come back to you. Obviously, that's your decision, but um, the bringing this back, it, don't concentrate specifically on the two designs, concentrate on what you want us to bring back to you, whether it's three, four concepts, whatever, what you'd want us to look at, what would maximize the most parking, what we could add, those sorts of things. Um, and that's kind of what we're looking and why we brought it to you. To, you know, to, a lot of the attention is being played to is either one or two, option one or two, and it's not. That was just to stimulate the conversation of what we, we've heard on other different projects. So I think that might help um, in getting that input. And we've already heard some of it, and we've heard some from the public that I agree with that we want to do, and that's what we're trying to accomplish with this before we go to design these different things. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'll just add, yeah, thank you so much, Mark. That's, that's exactly right. Um, just, just, this is just basically get the, the discussion started and, and kind of uh, understand the direction that the board wants to, us to, to move in. Obviously, um, we are going to solicit uh, public comment. Um, this is very um, conceptual in, um, or early in, in conceptual. Um, these are just ideas. So one is essentially just replace it in kind. You know, it's bricks. We'll replace the bricks and maybe a couple, you know, improvements to some, some cracked sidewalks. The other one is basically we could do, based on your direction, um, beautify it, you know, add some, you know, some lighting, some landscaping, you know, possibly consider a four-way stop at Hibiscus. Um, so that's, that's essentially, yeah, just to get the discussion started. Okay. Mr. Makers, based on the input that I got from the people, they'd like to see the street to be, to replace the brick. Uh, they're also concerned about not losing any parking space because, as was mentioned earlier, this is very, very important to have parking spaces in the area. We do have a city parking, but it's always full. Uh, this is a very, very popular street. Many school buses are uh, involved there. You have many uh, people using the road. It's very important that we have enough parking, but also we need to find a way to beautify that, including some landscaping. In regards, uh, in regards to the uh, four-way stop on the hibiscus, I, will, I think it's a good idea providing it's supported by the police department. Um, and also I would like to see all the underground utilities to be replaced and upgrading the street lighting as well. This is exactly the input that I got from the people. Okay. Vice Mayor Carr. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, real quick, just for um, some public advocacy. Uh, I believe it's in our charter. If a brick road is brick today, you cannot pave over it in the charter. So there's no need about is there going to be brick or not. If there's current brick, it's going to be brick. Um, four things really easily. Uh, crosswalk hibiscus, I support. It's safety, pedestrian safety is important. I would support some type of four-way stop if the police department feel that's best there. I do see, although it's a bumpy road, I see people speed down that road. It's People race down it to try to make a light. So it's some way to mitigate the uh, safety for kids and people that are crossing right there because you've got the church parking lot that people cross all times of the, um, of the week to get over to the church. Um, mitigating the speed in orange and, uh, again, pedestrian safety is an important thing. Uh, streetscape, I think, is important too. Um, we don't necessarily have to max it out landscaping everywhere, but I think having some type of streetscape is an important thing to have as well too on this. 
corridor. Um, and then at the end of the day, I, I thought initially when we looked at Orange Street from a designing standpoint at two fiscal years ago that we were looking at how do we gain more parking on Orange Street. And so that's an important thing to me is how do we lay out the parking. Max, maximize it. Maximize maybe, the parking. Maybe gain a couple spots even. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that would be the most ideal situation and then somehow incorporate some streetscape as well too. Um, at the, so I think that's heading in, the right, in that direction. Thank you. Commissioner Terpani. Thanks, Mayor. Um, let's get a note about the charter, uh, Vice Mayor. Um, so basically I support uh, a combination of the two. Um, I, I think that it would be appropriate to, you know, move forward with some kind of a, a streetscape on this. Uh, my recollection from maybe the last discussion that we had on this, and I don't know, you know where it shook out, but I, <clears throat> there was some discussion, I think, if we were gonna do the streetscape to cross Safford Avenue and go all the way to Ring. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know <clears throat> where, where that left off. Um, I think one of the biggest things you know, to consider as we analyze the parking is, number one, is the parking in between Hibiscus and Safford on the north side of the road, is that even, is that legal? right in as it exists today and two as we continue to analyze this and for everybody's edification are you proposing any right away loss which it doesn't look like to me based on figure one and figure two uh, i don't think there's going to be any yeah, right of way kind of encroachment right i think it's going to basically stay what it is and try to maximize you know what the the boundaries that we have to work with sure and you know when you go to restrike parking obviously it's going to be to today's code mm -hmm. so if you can't fit it legally, then you're not going to get it, right? So, um, the tree wells on like the north intersection of Hibiscus in uh, Orange, I think are appropriate. <clears throat> you know, if you've everybody's been to that intersection, if you're heading south, the stop sign is like <laughs> 30 feet south <laughs> of where the actual intersection is. So, you know, something for sure needs to be done there. And I think that those tree wells might help with, you know, possible uh, visibility issue if there's cars parked all the way to the corner. Um, you know, in addition to that, it's not, I don't think it's rocket science. I don't think that we need a consultant to help us do this. I think it's pretty simple. Landscape, lights, some benches, some trash receptacles. There's not gonna be any right away impacts. Um, you know, you're basically putting back what's there. As you said, Nick, the tree wells are there. Um, what else did I have here? I mean, that's about it. I support the four-way stop at Hibiscus and Orange. Um, you know, I don't think that we want to see a net loss in parking, but I think that it's also important when we're analyzing this to understand, you know, what's there today from a code standpoint, you know, in today's world, mm -hmm. the parking spaces that you know, everybody's utilizing may or may not be, you know, truly legal, in which case I don't think that they should be counted towards the parking that's there today. Um, and then, you know, I'm, I'm curious to, to see what comes of crossing Safford Avenue, um, at least, you know, not necessarily with the bricking, but maybe just the lighting component, I think is something that the board should consider. Thank you. Okay. Commission Donovan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you again for the presentation. Uh, do we have any prices associated with any of this, or is this just like purely <coughs> conceptual? It's pretty, yeah, very early at this point. Yeah, that's tough, because I get that we're looking for direction, but it's just, it's so, that's so hard to do without knowing what anything costs, if that, if that makes sense. Like, it's, I'm, I feel like I'm shopping without my wallet, because some stuff might look really good or might sound really good on paper, and then, you know, hey, we budgeted whatever it was, like 675000 for the whole thing, um, and then it just becomes way off. So I would definitely err on the side of simplicity. I, I, I like option one, um, but just, you know, fixing cracks in the sidewalk. Um, any pedestrian improvements are definitely worth looking into, obviously rebricking the street. Um, I, think, I think a big thing that we could do, not just on this street, but all the streets, is increase pressure washing, stuff like that, um, the little things. Uh, that's just one of those things that maintains what we do have there and I think goes a long way. So I, I would err on the side of simplicity just with the rising costs of everything because um, I don't, I don't want to get attached to a, a big idea or anything like that and then we come way off our budget. So thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Thank you, Mayor. Um, 
I, I think um, everything that was said this evening is fine. I think we talked about the um, four-way stop at Hibisc, is that correct? Okay. And the, um, the only thing I, I do see, and, and uh, with regard to Ring Avenue, um, this is going to be pretty much a rebricking, right? That's what we're talking about, with the exception of utilities and things of that nature. Um, Ring Avenue, we don't, I mean, from uh, Orange, um, East Orange from Safford. Safford to Ring Avenue, there's really nothing. That's not part of this right now. Is that correct? Right. Well, maybe we should consider adding at least striping for parking. Looking while we're doing the de overall design, I think we're going to look at diagonal parking, I would suspect. At least I'd like to see something like that. But extend that. Because Ring Avenue is as wide as Orange, uh, I'm sorry, from Safford to um, Ring Avenue is as wide as it is from, uh, it looks to me, from Pinellas to uh, Safford. So if if we're talking about parking, let's look, because it, I don't think there's anything there, quite frankly, on that part from Safford to uh, Ring Avenue on Orange Street. I mean, people just park parallel, but it's wide enough to do diagonal parking on the one side if that would work, maybe in the opposite direction. But I, I, um, I think that's something that, um, since we're doing an, a design for that area, we need to look at that. And um, that's it. I, I think the streetscape, I'd like, obviously we're gonna be doing some enhancements as far as uh, tree plantings and acorn lights and things of that nature. That's pretty much simple to keep it as it is, but just really dress it up and maybe put some planters there. Um, keep it wide as it is right now. And then I wish we could brick it all the way from Safford to um, Ring Avenue. But right now, I, I mean, we could look at that and see what the cost would be. But I would also uh, at least look at the um, reconfiguring the parking on, on that part from Safford to Ring as well as part of that. Yes. Wait, is that clear enough for the, what you've gotten from us tonight? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so Mr. Liquish, you got what you want? Yes, sir. Okay. Mayor, do you want to, do I need to update my motion at all with these five or six items? Go ahead. I mean, so from a motion standpoint, I made the initial motion to maximize the parking, uh, have streetscape, pedestrian safety, four-way stop, um, rebrick the street, and then I would even, I would support also crossing Safford to Ring Street uh, to match because it, it makes sense what everyone or the two commissioners are saying. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. shaving half your face and leaving the other <laughs> half not done, right? So um, it makes sense to do that. So I would. I would I, I'd like to include that uh, uh, replacing the underground utilities as well as the street lighting. Okay. Yes, we automatically look at that on all. Yeah, that, that we was, automatically yeah, one of the components that, that we were going to you know, consider to begin with, yes. Okay. Added. And second? Second. second. You agree with that? Mm -hmm. okay. And the motion's just to look into it, right? right. Come back with that. Yeah, yeah, we're okay. definitely going to be coming back to the board. <coughs> and roll call, please. Commissioner Vatikiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Ella, who's this? Yes, thank you. And item number 16 is commission input on Tarpon Avenue, Safford Avenue intersection safety, and Tarpon Avenue parking. Staff report, Chief Young. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Board of Commissioners. Uh, city Manager had asked the Police Department to look into traffic safety concerns uh, on Tarpon Avenue downtown, specifically Tarpon and Safford Avenue, as well as the uh, possibility of having angled park in, uh, in the downtown uh, business district. And also he asked us to look into feasibility and of having Safford Avenue closed from Lemon Street to Orange Street and having that being created a walkable area and what options were there. Uh, so what I did was task, uh, ask Major Trill uh, to work with our action team members, Sergeant Miller and uh, Officer Boone and, and conduct a study. They did work in collaboration with Bob Robertson and Caroline Lanford from Planning and Zoning. Uh, to try to come together with some uh, recommendations for the board. Maybe so I'm going to turn it over to Major Trill here in a second. Um, but 
just so you understand, any speed reductions that we do on Tarpon Avenue will have to collaborate with the state uh, because they do link into State Road 582, which is a state road, so they'll have uh, oversight over in that area as well. Uh, we do work with uh, county uh, traffic engineers as well in trying to uh, look into these types of issues. Off Officer Boone's been in uh, constant contact with the state for left turns already on Tarpon Avenue and uh, Pinellas Avenue there from the Board of Commissioners asking for that a while ago and Dota Canise and Alternate 19 as well as Mears and Alternate 19. So those are still ongoing uh, negotiations we're having with the state. But uh, as soon as we get this up and running, Mark, yeah, we're <laughs> I'll turn it over to Major Trell and uh, Officer Boone. We can, we can start a little early. You guys have it in your backup anyways. We'll try to catch up for those watching here and uh, online. Uh, we're going to start off first. When we looked at this, the objectives, <coughs> as, as you saw, review the current uh, traffic plan for downtown, determine alternatives in regard to pedestrian, bicycle, and vehicular traffic, address concepts suggested by individuals that we've heard, whether it's from the board or the, from the community. Uh, we reviewed those alternatives to the current plan uh, because we want to uh, enhance the safety. And we were going to provide feasible modifications to the present design uh, to enhance the safety and quality of life. Uh, safety issues are, and uh, recommendations will be noted herein. We're going to start off with speed limit, and I'm going to let Tony address the speed limit. Good evening. I'm Anthony Boone, uh, Tarpon Springs Police. Our current speed on Tarpon Avenue is 35 miles an hour. That's starting from U.S. Highway 19 all the way to South Spring. There are two signs. And that is if you're going westbound, there's one at Chase Bank and one at Walton Avenue. Um, so there's two signs that say 35 miles an hour. Then uh, we get into our school zone, which is only enforceable uh, once you're, the school is in uh, session with the lights flashing. Now we're up at Gross going westbound. There is a 20 mile an hour yellow speed limit sign that has a blinking yellow light non-enforceable there's no other speed limit signs or nothing else except for our signs that say stop pedestrian walking uh, bike trail as you continue across pinellas avenue all the way to south spring currently we have uh the your speed sign which is is great but it's also attached to the 20 mile an hour unenforceable sign and the locations of them. One is if you're coming eastbound from Pinellas is that Mother Mears parking lot. So everybody's speed is showing about 12 miles an hour because they take off from the stop sign. Some things that I recommended on the speed limit uh, between gross and spring is a 20 mile an hour enforceable speed limit sign. That's because we have pedestrian, we have a lot of bicyclists, it's business, a lot of parking, and all these signs need to be posted uh, properly so we can enforce them. Uh, to reduce the speed on Tarpon Avenue east of Gross, so if we're going back towards US Highway 19 or 19 to Gross, the speed limit's currently 35. Look at reducing it to 25. We have a lot of, uh, it is a safe walk to school zone there. We have all the intersections from uh, North Walton, Diston, uh, as you go down Ring, all the traffic is coming in off of Tarpon Avenue. That will reduce uh, the, the speed going down Tarpon Avenue, can reduce a lot of our vehicle crashes. Uh, the beacon yellow light that we have that's flashing, put it with the enforceable sign along with a bike and a pedestrian sign. So it's telling you when you're going into the downtown that we're entering a pedestrian high traffic area, uh, but it's gotta be enforceable. And that light is blinking yellow to uh, let every driver know that uh, you're coming into that. And we also already have what we use for our, our safety is the, your speed. Do you want to go on into Tarpon Avenue, Major? Well, we're going to talk about uh, intersections as well. So we're going to cover pedestrians. We're going to cover intersections. The intersection we want to cover, the two of them looking at this area, is tar Tarpon and Safford and Tarpon and Pinellas. Um, Tarpon and Safford, 
safety issues of people turning onto or traversing the intersection. Uh, the issue is uh, exacerbated by people east-west on Tarpon Avenue, not knowing when to stop and just slamming on their brakes. Uh, you'll see that a lot if you travel that, people would just hit their brakes. Uh, and then either the side street thinks they're okay or they start waving people out. The problem is they're waving people out into oncoming traffic that doesn't stop because they don't have to. Um, currently, there's stop signs and crosswalks, flashing signs and small signs. We're gonna get to the small signs when we make the recommendations as well in several areas. But the small signs, if you guys remember, when you're driving down there, they were in the middle of the road. Number one, we wanna get them out of the middle of the road because it narrows it anyways and people are clipping them. Put them on the side of the road and if you, if you look now, there's a stop sign in the middle. It says you, you have to stop for pedestrians. Unfortunately, people don't understand because they see a miniature stop sign and they slam on the brakes and they cause a, a traffic congestion and or a traffic hazard. So we've already are in the process of removing those, getting those removed and putting yield signs in. Same signs are gonna be in there, just says yield so someone doesn't drive down the street, go, oh, there's a small stop sign and I need to slam on my brakes because that's one of the issues that we're having there. Um, Pedestrian crossing, uh, we're going to change those because they're causing confusion. We're sure that all the lights are working, go back through. Anywhere that we need to along this area is touch up the painting and markings along the uh, roadways for the crosswalks. Uh, we're talking also, if we look here at the intersection, is uh, stop signs for north and southbound. At the intersection, we have them. What we'd like to do, and then we're going to leave it up to you, there's a subdued way. You put the reflective red strip on the post. So as you're coming up, it sticks out a little more. The other one you could do is a red flashing solar beacon, uh, much like the yellow ones we see on Tarpon Avenue. The problem is, and, and it would have to have a cover on it, but the problem is there's businesses down there and we already have flashing yellow lights. Do you want red, big red flashing lights going south and northbound? Um, so that's up to you. If you want a more subdued, we put a red reflective post uh, on the stop sign. Um, Pedestrian crossings, we talked about that. That's actually what it looked like. It has the yield sign in, instead of the stop sign. If you look back here, the, that's the one we currently have with the stop sign. We want to replace those, put the yield sign in. Um, another thing we can do to enhance that is to put cross traffic does not stop on north and south uh, below the stop sign to ensure that they understand that north, uh, east and west does not stop. Uh, we looked at, that was brought up, um, posting a right turn only. Um, I, don't recommend that. Um, if you do right turn only, you're gonna cause people to have to go right, then they're gonna try to be doing U-turns or using the next intersection, coming back out, coming on a feeder street anyways. Um, you're gonna have per people turning no northbound on Safford Avenue, turn right uh, when they want to go down downtown, and they're gonna have to end up going to ring. You're gonna cause congestion problems taking a left turn. You're gonna back up uh, Tarpon Avenue. You're gonna have people trying to do U-turns that the cars can't make or try to do a three-point turn in the middle of the road. I don't think that's a, uh, viable or a, a good option. Uh, the other one is a, a four-way stop. However, I'm not a big fan of this. We're not a big fan of this uh, when we talk about putting a stop sign there because if you've already seen how congested it is to begin with and you start stopping traffic there, it's gonna back it up, cause, cause even more congestion, especially going back to Pinellas Avenue. Once you get congestion up to Pinellas Avenue, then you're gonna have problems, people making left turns and you're gonna block the intersection. We already see people trying to get through lights and blocking intersections across the city now just think when there's nowhere to go, they're gonna be out in the middle of the intersection, then nobody's gonna be anywhere, it's gonna cause more of a problem. So those two are possibilities, however, we would not highly suggest those. Um, Tony, you wanna to take Tarpon and Pinellas, what we're looking at doing? On the Tarpon and Pinellas, this is our, another area where we have a lot of pedestrian and traffic issues. This also needs to include some of our truck route. We have one sign, westbound truck route, and it has an arrow currently pointing um, not down, it's pointing down ring, trying to alert the drivers to go down Lemon. That's our truck route. So we just cleared out the trees there, have a big, now it's all clear, but it needs to be a warning sign up ahead of it. Uh, replace all our faded signs from Tarpon on down, some enforceable new signs the left turn i was just talking about the the truck the truck route once you make your left on the lemon there's one more truck sign that says right turn to alternate 19. so but we have nothing coming back eastbound so we don't have a lot of traffic that travels pinellas avenue and comes back down tarpon but it just needs to be looked at because we do get a few trucks that turn down and they don't know where to go because the GPS is telling them. 
And we just had an incident that just happened recently. So we're working in, in, into that, and it was a GPS issue, not really a truck route issue. Hmm. That's what I have, Major. All right, and all, again, with this, at any intersection or any place downtown, we're looking at up, updating any signs that need to be updated, updating any painting that needs to be updated as well, and making sure all the, the lights are working. All right, so we're going to move on to pedestrians. We want to increase the, the, their safety, obviously. We talked about part of the problem there at Tarpon and, uh, Tarpon and Safford are those signs. We're going to replace those, get the yield signs, uh, and any other painting markings or signage that needs to be replaced. There is a current one. We already discussed this, but I mentioned it. These are for pedestrians, and um, we mentioned it before at intersections. Um, Mid-block mid crossing as well. We're going to replace the signs there because they're not just at Safford Avenue. And um, we're going to get them out of the roadway as well. So this is just kind of a general thing. Obviously, anything that needs to be approved by you will be approved by you. Anything by FDOT will have to be approved by FDOT. We plan on doing as much as possible in-house, working with Tom Funch's crew uh, and getting it done. And uh, Tony's really good about being on top of it. If you guys say this is where we're going, we're going to get it done ASAP as soon as, uh, as, soon as practical and possible. Um, also understanding that FDOT is going to work on US-19 uh, between Huey or on top of an average between Huey and 19 uh, coming up. So again, the big thing would be the signs, the speed limits, the crosswalks, and uh, that tr truck sign that we've had problems before. And I know uh, one of you is well aware of the recent truck issue that was who we want to make sure they're taking the truck route and not going downtown. All right. <clears throat> Next, we're going to look at parking. So it's been brought up, brought up about the parking thing. We talked about it, what, two weeks ago. Uh, so we did, did a review of this. Look at angled parking compared to what we have now is uh, parallel parking. We have parallel parking on both sides of the road in the 100 and 200 block of Tarpon Avenue. With that, when you're looking at uh, parking, you're looking at traffic volume and the width of the roadway. Those are two major factors, and those are two major factors that came into play in our review. Uh, we looked at studies, and I couldn't find one, just to let you know, that uh, said that angled parking was safer um, I found ones that said they had more crashes. Some of them are not necessarily the reason, but backing, but the, they put them in there and more people actually park there um, because it, normally it would open up more space. For us, it's not going to open up more space. We're going to talk about that. Uh, but the TRB, the ODOT, and the AASHTO all said that the preferred and uh, recommended is parallel parking over angled parking. Um, with that, we know some cons with parallel parking that people normally say you exit near the roadway, uh, difficulty in maneuvering and the time it takes to perform it, which can cause some traffic congestion. Those are the ones that are always out there for parallel to begin with. But we have to, to uh, compare that to angled parking concern, which is backing, limited visibility. Uh, it's limited visibility when you're backing to begin with, and now you're talking about the size of the trucks that are parked next to you. It makes it even more difficult to back out, and now you're backing out onto a major thoroughfare between US-19 and Ultra 19 which is a uh, major artery in the city. We have Klosterman, MLK. Well, we have Mears now, which is excellent. Um, but Tarpon Avenue is one of those. Um, and then there's sub ones as well. When we're talking about a business district, when you're buying things, a lot of times you have to access the trunk. The trunk would be out there where you normally be, where your car door would be. So you're still, there's still incidents where you're going to be out near traffic for, for safety. And the last one is pedal error, although it doesn't happen a lot. If you pull into a par parking spot that's parallel and you mistakenly hit the, we, we have this in Florida sometimes, mistakenly hit the accelerator instead of the brake, uh, you crash into a car and cause damage. Uh, if you hit it going at an angle, uh, there's a good chance going on the sidewalk where pedestrians, benches, and buildings are, which can be a lot more devastating than backing or uh, hitting a car going in forward for slipping off your pedal. Um, we looked at the roadway on Tarpon Avenue. It's approximately 38 feet curb to curb. Parallel parking on both sides, uh, which is eight foot at this point. Um, and it leaves you 16 feet for parking, which leaves you a 22 foot center lane, or center driving area for the, uh, for cars, for the flow of traffic. Now, it is noted that uh, um, fire department, FD, I was going to say, fire department uh, standards are 12 feet. So at this point, we're already under the standards or suggested uh, location for a uh, or location distance for a fire truck. And we're going to look at these angled parkings that actually encroach more on that. Um, let me get on to the next one. There we go. All right. So 
working with the city as well, the standard recommended parking stallers are nine, nine by 18. Uh, if you look, the Ford F-150, which is, the, I think, the most popular truck, is 17.43, and a Toyota Camry, which is the most popular midsize, I believe, is 16.01. So a lot of times people will say, well, why don't you just make it a smaller or, or shorter distance so you can fit more in there? Uh, unfortunately, there's going to be compact cars, and that's the only one's going to fit, um, which if you said compact cars can only park here, you'd be cutting down on a great majority of the vehicles on the roadway and you're gonna have people that don't listen to that anyways and then encroaching into the lanes of traffic which is dangerous so we looked at the uh angles and how much they would encroach right now we have zero degrees which is parallel parking it's not encroaching any farther it goes eight feet if the only one or the least encro uh, encroaching one is 30 degrees so if you go 30 degrees it goes 16.8 feet which now you're cutting into another eight inches which le uh, lowers the 22 feet of lane travel even less and again, we just discussed it's already under what's recommended for a fire truck. So with that, you can only do angled parking on one side of the road to begin with. You couldn't do it on both sides of the road. So the only option for two, two sided parking uh, would be, uh, or the only one is parallel because you can't do it on both sides of the road with angled parking. All right, and this is just a picture of what I just described, how the angle parking would be, how far it would encroach in the roadway, and I keep pushing the light up button, and that's basically what I just put up there, which, which, which what it would take, encroach, and what it would leave. All right, it also, at this point, if you're, if you're talking about anything else, you're gonna, if you're talking about widening or putting it on one side, you'd have to have 22 feet you'll notice that the road is lower in some areas because of, of street scraping or beautification, like in the 200 block where it sticks out to begin with, you'd have to end up removing that kind of stuff because it encroaches on the, uh, and, and leaves you only less than 38 feet. Does that make sense? Same with at the intersection of, of Safford Avenue and um, Tarpon Avenue. It, it goes out there and you wouldn't have enough room to, to, to have the, your through traffic. People want to say, okay, well, you, you did it on Court Street. Why can't you do it on Tarpon Avenue? Well, two things. If you remember the width and the traffic volume. The traffic volume is not nearly as high on Court Street than it is here, and the road is approximately 8 to 10 feet wider. Uh, so it allows that uh, better than it would on Tarpon Avenue. One-sided parking, we discussed that it can only, can, uh, only do one-sided parking, so the safety issues arrive when driver are heading in one direction. So if you could only do it on one side, and you wanted to do it on one side at 30 degrees, one of the problems is if I'm driving westbound and they're facing eastbound because parking is so rare, I want that parking spot. And then I'm going to try to cut my car across oncoming traffic, number one. Number two, I'm going to hit the brakes to do, make that car, car uh, make that turn and back up traffic, or I'm going to make that turn and not be able to turn and have to do a three-point turn in the middle of the roadway. Uh, so that causes some congestion problems. It also causes some, some traffic hazard problems of conflict points for crashes. And uh, again, I'd be having to make more than a 90 degree turn. Let's get, try to get back to where I was. Look at that, we're done. <laughs> All right, so the conclusion, based on the traffic volume, the width of the roadway and the environment, the recommendations of the research and studies and the safety concerns presented, this was a, a brief thing. You got a little more in your packet. Uh, we would not recommend changing the current parallel parking to angled parking. You, you want to take any questions now or you want them all at the end? Later. All at the end. All right. So let's move on to the Safford Streetscape. The issue broached was redesigning Safford Avenue from Orange Street to Lemon Street for pedestrian use only, maybe beautifying it, putting, from what I understand, a, like a walk around area, kind of hang around uh, for pedestrians. So gathering, seating, and dining. Well. The current plan is Pinellas Trail for pedestrian and bicycle use north and southbound with sidewalks for people gathering, visiting the businesses, etc. This was the, the only option available if you wanted to close it down, and that would be to leave basically at least almost half or more than half of uh, northbound Safford open and southbound Safford open on the opposite sides. One, because we have Court Street, which is a roadway that comes off Pinellas Avenue and you have to get them out somewhere. Um, you're not going to funnel them through the parking lot because that's dangerous and it's a roadway. You don't funnel cars on a roadway through a parking lot. So you'd have to leave that open so you'd lose about half the space south of the intersection from Court Street to Lemon Street. On the north side, there's a bank and the bank has a drive-through and you're not gonna move that drive-through and you're not gonna tell the bank that they can't have a drive-through. 
So you'd have to leave that open so the bank could have access <clears throat> or exiting onto North Safford Avenue to go north. So that's the only way it could properly work. Um, so the key points are listed here, but here's the, here's the problem that I'm concerned with. Tra a vehicle traffic would not be able to proceed northbound, which would mean you're going to increase the traffic on Lemon Street on the south side and Orange Street on the north side. So people that are going northbound on Safford Avenue that either want to turn on Safford Avenue or traverse the intersection to continue to go northbound, um, if you're going, continue to go that way, or you want to go to the east, uh, you're going to go down to the side feeder streets. First one available is Ring. Now, I don't know if you've driven on Ring, but there is a problem getting out just like there's a problem getting out of Tarpon Avenue. In fact, because there's not flashing lights to slow people down, uh, I believe it's a little more difficult to get out when I'm on Ring Street coming from City Hall to get onto Tarpon Avenue than when I'm on Safford Avenue. So whatever issues you have to begin with, you're going to push them to another area because they're still going to have to traverse Tarpon Avenue or if they're going eastbound, pull out just like they would at Tarpon Avenue. Um, on the north side, it becomes a little more of a problem because now if I'm coming down and I want to go first, and again, the people will say, well, why don't you go to, to uh, Pinellas Avenue. Well, m most people aren't going to go longer out of the way to get to something to the east. They're going to go eastbound, which means you're going to hit Ring Avenue, Gross Avenue, Levis Avenue, et cetera. Uh, but the first available is Ring, so you're probably going to increase that intersection. Um, the more of a problem for that as well is on Orange Street when they're coming down. Now you're pushing them into a residential area. And again, if they come down um, Orange Street towards Ring, there's a stop sign. And you'll normally have multiple cars backed up trying to get out or traverse the intersection to get out left-hand turn or get across the intersection. Now you're going to back it up to that intersection, and if it's backed up, most people will probably go straight. Now you're driving them into a more of a residential area, so you're increasing traffic in that residential area. Um, and there's some pictures here at the end. I'll go back to that. This is Orange Street going towards, the top left one is going towards Pinellas Avenue. You see that the cars are parked there. We often get cars we just discussed parked on both sides of the road. You're narrowing it down. Now you're pushing more cars to that intersection. The intersection, when they come up to it, has two lights, neither of which is a turn lane. They're both straight red, uh, green lights. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to have vehicles um, in that more narrow area, and you see it's not really designated for a left turn lane. You're going to have vehicles backing that up again and trying to take left turns, and you're going to increase the left turns across uh, traffic without a turn signal. Going towards uh, Ring Avenue is the middle one going south, and you'll see the parking on both sides of the road again. Now we're increasing the traffic of vehicles going southbound as vehicles travel northbound uh, on a relatively thin, thin road with uh, parking on both sides. <coughs> the top right one is actually if they go, okay, I'm, I'm to Ring Avenue, I can't make it. Now you're pushing them into uh, more of a residential district, and there's parking there as well. So you're going to have... Uh, vehicles trying to pass cars and you're going to increase that number going into oncoming cars and last is coming from the south on ring avenue and that kind of just kind of shows it's basically the the same it's re relatively heavily traveled road just like it is at safford avenue so i don't believe you're increasing safety by moving it to a different um, intersection so the concerns with the traffic congestion at orange and pinellas uh, the increased traffic flow eastbound on orange street towards the residential area and traffic is attempting to turn eastbound or using feeder streets or, or, or pulling out, and again, you're going to have the same issue. Based on that, um, we don't recommend the street state concept as it applies or, or shown here, uh, blocking off Safford Avenue. Now, we are completed Thank you. with the presentation. We now go to the uh, public comments on this item. Some days. My guys, the 1515 Riverside Drive, that whole presentation was an excellent presentation. You guys did an amazing job. I just, for the life of me, don't understand why we just don't ask a simple question. The simple question is, how do we get more parking? How do we move traffic? Why are we making suggestions as commissioners and giving diagonal parking, um, roundabouts, things that 
these guys have to sit and waste so much valuable time trying to figure out how that, this all makes no sense. So I'm going to touch base with a couple of things that I've noticed. I agree with the speed limit sign, but I would like to see that it be one speed limit for the whole area. So if we're going to reduce it down, we should reduce it down to 25 miles an hour because people are not going to follow where it's 30 here, 25 there, 20 there. It's just, it's, it's a recipe for failure. Um, I don't know if that's safe, but that would be my recommendation. Um, the north and south intersection at Tarpon and Safford, all we need to do is have a motion sensor there so that any cars coming down Safford, or if it's a bicycle, it triggers the motion sensor and a red light turns on to slow the traffic or stop the traffic going up and down Tarpon Avenue and you remove all of the issues. We don't have to have a traffic light there, we just have to have a stop sign that triggers with a motion sensor. That's the whole thing. You don't have to worry about making right turns. You don't have to worry about pedestrians. You don't have to worry about bicycles. You don't have to worry about cars. And you give it enough time so that it, as, as that motion sensor triggers, whoever's coming down Safford gives the time for the motorists on Tarpon to stop. I do agree that we have to get rid of those stop signs and turn them into yield signs. Um, just way too many times, especially with the snowbirds here, they see it as a stop sign, they stop, they, and they, as the officers said, they wave people across, and you're just sitting there just not knowing what's going on. It's very confusing. They shouldn't even be in the street. Um, I also think we should make the corners, um, we have those, um, those little uh, sidewalk pieces on all four corners, they should be a little shallower, giving us a little more room. It's very tight to, if you're moving a boat or, or you have a, a nice size two trucks going by, some of the trucks have mirrors that are sticking out almost 18 inches off the uh, off their vehicle. It's very easy to whack a mirror. So, I, I mean, I, I just think we need more room, not less. Um, the diagonal parking, I, I just couldn't believe that it was even brought up. It would be a total nightmare. And the biggest problem, uh, as the police officer said, um, trunk access. I could just visualize somebody being texting and they go off like they hit a mailbox, only this time it's somebody's legs being crushed against a trunk. So I think that's the worst place to kind of put that. Um, and then again, I also agree with pedal damage. It's very easy to slip off your brake and to hit the gas and to go through somebody's storefront and put them out of business for quite some time. Um, I also wanted to share one more thing that I don't know if we all realize, but the uh, buttons that are on tarp in, in Pinellas, they don't correspond to the street that you're crossing. You, when you're walking up the street, you would hit the button and then cross, but that button controls making a right turn, which doesn't make any sense very equivalent to some of the sprayers at the uh, beaches where you hit the middle one and the bottom sprays your feet or you hit the top one. It, it, they're just out of sequence. So I think that should be looked at. I didn't even know this. Uh, many times when I'm standing there crossing, um, you have to hit the, the opposite button to where you're going across. If you're walking um, across Tarpon Avenue, you would think you tap the button, you wait, and you cross, but you have to tap the side button to go across. I know I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Next person, please. Baniotis Kuyas, Peninsula Avenue. Uh, first, I'd like to start off with just crosswalks with bright, wide lights. There are some cities and crosswalks that I've walked in certain areas where the whole walkway will be lit up. So just something to consider at nighttime. Uh, I would ask to remove the walkway stands in the middle of the road, which we pointed out a couple in the pictures, and, and they have been removed. But that's for safety for first responders to be able to travel uh, east and west on Tarpon Avenue when it's busy during rush hour traffic because they won't be able to get through around those little walkway stands. And just a suggestion or something to think about where the pedestrians on the trail hit the button 
on both sides to go across the street, they may be set back too far. So cars may not necessarily see them. I don't know if you can bring them in a little bit. I don't know if it caused an issue with uh, cars being able to turn north and south on Safford, but something to consider. And on the Pinellas Trail, for bikers, for pedestrians, both sides, at 20 feet, at 40 feet, at 60 feet away, maybe we can add some signs reiterating, you must stop at this stop sign, at this intersection. You must hit the button before you cross because we got pedestrians who are either walking past and they don't hit the button or bikers who just want to keep their time going and get their pace right and they don't even consider stopping. Well, they got to stop just like the rest of us when they see a stop sign. Maybe we can do little weeks at a time where we can write citations to individuals after we put those signs up, constantly reinforcing the stop at those intersections so we don't cause that clutter. And um, the police department spent a lot of time doing this report. I mean, for him, for Mr. Trill, Major Trill to come up here and speak 20 minutes straight, they definitely put some hours into this, into researching, especially the diagonal parking spots. So, uh, we need to let them use their resources towards other items too without wasting that much time coming up with uh, researching it all. And I've talked about it before, some of the crosswalks, there's a lot of big planters, big pot planters, they're big. They take up visibility, they take up being able to see people cross the street. As you're coming up east and west, those big planters, they can cover up two thirds of somebody who's between four and five feet tall. So open up the road more, maybe consider removing some of those big uh, potters that we see. That way we can be able to see people crossing. And that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Anita Pros, 901 Bayshore Drive. We are an old community, and the new cars and trucks are too big. On Tarpon Avenue, leave the parking as is, and put up our signs, and have our speed limits, and let's be safe. Our Tarpon Pine Alice intersection, where the insurance office is, I'm waiting for a car to go through their windows one day. Mm. We need a rock there to stop it. It's dangerous there. Um, as far as uh, the trail, people have to stop there. You need the lights for the bikes to get by, uh, across the street. And people are kind and they will wait because they know they have to. Yes, there are accidents there. It's because people don't stop like they're supposed to. Um, and I hope in the future, we never close hibiscus between Tarpon and Orange Street again, because when it was closed for uh, businesses to put their tables there, it made it very difficult for traffic to get through. They go down hibiscus to hit Orange Street and take a left to get to uh, 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 the light to be able to turn right to go north or <coughs> left to go south, because we have congestion in the winter here. And we need every artery opened for cars to get through. And I hope we never close that hibiscus again because it was very hard to get through Tarpon Avenue. But leave our parking as it is. And we just have to suffer because the cars are bigger, the trucks are bigger, and we are an older community. And it looked fi fine, nice to do it the other way. But those pictures were old pictures and not as accurate as they are now. I had a professional photographer tell me that. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments on this item? Here none. And now we're going to, uh, uh, actually I need a motion. Um, let me make a motion, I'll try Mayor, and then we can adjust it as the conversation goes. I'd like to um, make a motion that we accept the police department's um, recommendations. Um, specifically with the speed limit um, from Gross to Huey uh, down to 25 miles an hour and then from Gross to Spring um, 
Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, 20 miles per hour. And uh, recommendation on the signage, um, as recommended by the police department, not to include solar with a red uh, on the stop sign. And then um, the additional signage as has been recommended. I, and then that's pretty much it. Your recommendations on diagonal parking is, is except embedded in here that we just accept your recommendations as presented with the exception of what I just described. Do we have a second? Can I get clarification on what you said uh, for Tarpon Ave and Safford? Was that the red reflective post you wanted or the blinking red? No, no, not the blinking. It would be with a red strip. Red Is reflective. that what you're asking? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll yeah. second that. Thank you. Thank you. And we're now going to the uh, commission comments. Major Trio and Officer Boone, thank you for the excellent presentation. I agree with all your uh, recommendations. You are the expert, we depend on your expertise and to provide safety to the, uh, to the people of Tarpon Springs. A couple things that uh, I need to uh, point out. The left turns going on Tarpon Avenue from Safford, north and south. To me, that's very unsafe and uh, I'm glad that we're going to do something about that. Um, I never turn left because it scares me. That's how unsafe it is in my, the way I see it. Reducing the speed limit, I think is very important that we do that. Replacing the signs as you recommended. And you have mentioned that on your report that you recommended the city manager to move forward to a traffic study on Tarpon Avenue, Pinellas Avenue, Safford Avenue, and I'll probably Orange Street as well. Is that something that we should have or the information that you provide us is sufficient? Okay, two things. What was the first thing about left turns? Well. You, you mentioned, yes. I said something about left turns. When you are on uh, Safford Street, you're trying to get into uh, Tarpon Avenue uh, from north and south, turning left to me, at, it's always unsafe. It's so close many times to have Right, but the, the plan doesn't, uh, have anything to bar that the right recommendation doesn't include that it doesn't include a no left turn I, that, I, I, that's something i oh okay I yeah like that was out. the problem that would be right turn only and then force it to um ring avenue which i believe would be more unsafe uh, based on the the environment and uh the location and the flow of traffic at that point so that was again it's i understand that it's more difficult to make a left turn but pushing it to ring avenue you're still going to have that same problem because the person's want to go go across or traverse the road or go left and if you make it right turn only you're going to force them that way so you don't see that do i think it it stinks to make a left turn yes and do i think it's a better alternative to make it right turn no um and the other thing was what did you say about the study well, there's a study that says that the uh, recommendation what, what's for the city manager to move forward for, uh, to do a traffic study on Tarpon Avenue, Pinellas Avenue, and Safford Avenue. If we need to make changes and need studies, I absolutely believe we should have a study if they're going to require or if we're going to change, uh, if there's a required by FDOT to do it on Tarpon Avenue or Pinellas Avenue. Uh, okay. And the question I have is based on the information that you provide us now, do you think it's necessary to... Uh, go ahead with a traffic study or not? I don't, don't have an uh, uh, opinion. I mean, I don't have an objection to it. I, I'm, I'm trying to understand where you said you got that from. Mayor, I think uh, you're referring to the memo that I wrote to you yes. on there. Yes. That, all that was addressing is what was proposed tonight. Uh, they talked about the study that Major Trail and Officer Boone did. Closing was just from Lemon Street to Orange Street. It wasn't a study of Orange Street itself, if that's what you're asking. No, Orange Street was not included, mm. but it was included Tarpon Avenue, Pinellas Avenue, and Safford Avenue. Avenue. Correct, but this was uh, the closing of Safford Avenue from Lemon to Safford, or from Lemon to Orange. That's what we looked at in this study. That's what Major Trill and Officer Boone looked into and did the study on. Uh, anything additional, what we're saying is, if FDOT requires additional investigations under 316-189, there's a part in there that talks about any connecting link to a state road. 
they have final say on, on the speed limits. Uh, there also could be step downs. You know, we're saying we wanna to go to 20 miles an hour, but there may be a requirement. You can't just jump from a 30 mile to a 20 mile an hour. You're gonna be, you know, looking at a speed trap type of situation. You, you wanna go from 30 to 25 to 20. So we we'll, might have to modify and step down in locations. And that's stuff that Tony or Officer Boone will work with, uh, with county engineers as well as the state DOT on, <clears throat> on the design concepts on roadway conditions as well as the speed limit signs. Thank you. I'm very glad that we're addressing the issues that we have in downtown in regards to traffic. My question is, do we have a program to uh, review other areas such as Florida Avenue, Mears, uh, and Riverside Drive and other areas that might be an issue with traffic? Well, when we have, when we have a, a complaint made, we look at it, number one. If we're having crashes in an area, it automatically, get look, uh, automatically gets looked at by us. Um, and then the action team goes out. If the city commission says, hey, can you look at this? We look at it. If the community calls and says, hey, we're having an issue there, um, we'll normally look at it to see. Now, that doesn't mean we do a lengthy study, but depending on what, what's addressed, um, if there are proactive things, in fact, I have an email out to all the officers that if you see areas that need it, like crosswalks and signs, or where we're having a con con continued or repeated problem, even if it's not consistent, a repeated problem at an intersection, get with me and we'll look into it. In fact, that, that was just updated, what, last week? Last week. Okay. to the officers that if you see this and we know again we know that there's an issue here because we're having either crashes at it or we're having officers go with this is kind of confusing to me they'll get with us i'll have the action team look into it and we'll also work with planning and zoning with caroline now uh, with her in there uh, looking at even areas where we just had a uh, traffic fatality out on tarpon avenue uh, out on the east side further officer boone's working and looking in that area uh, probably working with uh, duke energy on lighting and so so forth in that area mm -hmm. Thank you. Vice Mayor Carr. Thanks, uh, Major and Officer and uh, Chief. Thanks for the report. It was uh, really educational. Um, it's great to have some information to make some educated decisions on. So I uh, appreciate your hard work on that. And uh, it's also great having our hometown uh, police department and be able to work on something like this. So thank you for your, uh, your, your help. Um, touching base on a few things that you talked about, I'm in agreement with the no red flashing lights. Um, an agreement with a pedestrian yield versus stop, that makes sense. Um, I'm in favor of the speed limits, uh, which is was, was talked about already and Major, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Chief um, elaborated further. Understanding the angle of parking, great information you provided, thank you for bringing that up. I'll make sure to pass it on to the business owners who requested it, um, who own the properties and who are patrons and businesses there. So I'll make sure to pass it along to them. Um, couple things I had questions about if you could help me clarify uh, like there's a recent car accident that was on Safford and uh, Tarpon Avenue where the car was flipped over on the side in the crosswalk and on the bike trail can mm -hmm. you, are you aware of that mm -hmm. can you give me a little details on what happened there and do you have any other data on like how often we have accidents there uh, we, I don't know that crash to begin with Tony are you familiar with it I, I am. all right Tony is familiar with it um, that's not we have a list of our top f five they come every month, it's never close to the... The US-19 is typically all of them, yeah. Oh yeah, it's gonna smoke it every time. Yeah. If, you, if you look at the uh, th monthly report that I send out to y'all, uh, it lists our top 10 locations. Tarpon Safford's never been one of those uh, on that area. I think, Tony, we've had, what, five crashes in the last five years? It's probably yeah. less than that. Yeah. Um, I had a pedestrian, a bicycle, and a car, and it was the bicyclist's fault. Yeah. Well, why don't you just go ahead and just side, go over that. This one's pretty nasty. Let me just real quick. So this one was pretty nasty. It was a, the car was slipped over on its side in the bike trail from another car. I don't know if it's T-bone or some sort. Maybe someone ran the stop sign. I wasn't sure if you guys were aware of it or not, but it was like a Sunday morning or something. So. A lot of it was angles, the way it uh, hit the car, which knocked it over. Okay. And the other was the car came to a stop, but we're looking at one car running 30 miles an hour, and he did the stop and go and went. So the force of those two cars hitting, not a lot, but just the angle, I kept replaying it and replaying it and replaying it, trying to figure out what was the cause. And one person was driver in attention at the stop sign, took off, 
but he did the, I guess everybody calls it around here, the California roll. He slows down and then continues. Okay. So uh, just the car in motion stays in motion. So <laughs> as it hit the side of the car, the angle just happened to flip that car. Over. Sure, okay. That was. So the speed limit reduction and then also putting a sign up that says cross traffic does not stop would be it beneficial helps. to help in that situation, right? It helps. Potentially. Potentially, but Potentially. someone that doesn't sees a stop sign and taps the brakes doesn't really care about a yellow sign that says it doesn't stop because he knew that to begin with. Yeah. Oh, I agree. I understand. Completely. But the more we can make it for those people that would absolutely have no issue with it. Okay. Um, another question about flashing lights. So the bike trail, had, they have the beacon to press the light, right? And then the crosswalk also has the button to press the light to flash also. If a motorist is traveling down the road to Tarpon Avenue and someone on the bike trail presses the light, they don't have to stop, right? If someone presses the light. At the bike trail. It, the blinky lights go off to tell you to stop. But they have a stop sign. I just want to, I want to clarify a bike trail versus a crosswalk. That's what I want to have an understanding. The bike trail is here on the south side and on the north side. Right. They have to stop if there's a stop sign. The they press do. the bicycle. The bicycle presses the button, and it stops all the traffic. So if I'm driving, for instance, if I'm coming down um, the trail to Curlew Road, uh, Curlew, south of the uh, yeah, hospital, there's no blinking stop. lights. So I still have to stop when it says stop. I just have to look and then cross. I don't get blinking lights because there, this is a heavily traveled road with high traffic, and it's a major roadway. That's why, it's my understanding, it's why you put the blinky lights in, because there's a lot more cars. So they're supposed to stop, push the button, it blinks, stops this traffic, and then they go across. But by a statute, does the driver going east and west in Tarpon Avenue have to stop for the pedestrian on the bicyclist in the bike trail? If the pedestrian is in, in, the, cross, in the crosswalk. In the crosswalk. Well, he's, okay, he, the crosswalk he's, he's delineating east and the, west. the, the the pedal's trail from the crosswalk itself. So he's saying that's not a crosswalk. But it's... it's Once the bicyclist enters into that crosswalk section of the roadway, yeah. they, they, they would have the right of way there. The vehicle needs to yield to them. Okay, so that's... Would you like to... Crosswalk is it, where is the it painted? Is. And there, there was a question earlier, too. I can't remember who, but... Uh, just so everybody understands, the Pinellas County Trail is a county park. Yes. We don't control... What, the, what signage they put on in the county park. We do make recommendations to the park rangers all the time, and we do address that with them, just like the traffic lights in, in the city are not owned by the city. Those are all owned by either FDOT or, in some areas, the county. Uh, so they, they maintain those, those apparatuses as well. Uh, here, and, and a pedestrian, and a, or you know, when a bicyclist, I think somebody did mention it, and Commissioner, or Vice Mayor Carr did bring it up too. When you are riding a bicycle on a Pinellas Trail and there's a stop sign, regardless of where it's located, you have an, an obligation to stop at that stop sign. Uh, they talked about, do we go out and do enforcement? Uh, we had a high visibility enforcement grant for how many years now? three years that we do go out into those areas. We put out uh, information on our Facebook page about it, and we try to notify the public. We try, our goal is not to write tickets. Our goal is to educate the public to gain compliance, and that's any traffic-related situation. Uh, traffic's the number one complaint in any, na in any, any uh, community, and Tarpon Springs is no different. And we can go from one side of the city to the other side, and every street, people will be complaining about traffic, no matter where it's at. Uh, painting, you know, stop signs, the, the red paint's only as good on it unless there's an officer sitting next to it to get people to comply with it. What we ask everybody is just comply with the laws, and then things would be better in the community. If everybody drove like they do in front, of, want people to drive in front of their own house, we'd all be better. We wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation. However, that's not the case. So we're looking at what is in the best interest for traffic safety, traffic flow in, these, in this area of the downtown corridor. Uh, we can expand out, yes, Mayor, and look at all these other areas. We do every day, just like Major Trill said. The complaints come in, uh, we get, I get with Officer Boone or Major Trill, and we start targeted enforcement, as well as looking at options to, to correct those areas. Uh, you know, and then we can modify things as we come along. We work very well with Tom Funchen's crew. 
uh, the city crew getting out there for signage and, and getting things corrected right away. Uh, this downtown corridor is a highly dense population area with traffic, people on foot walking around. Our recommendations that we're bringing to you is based on traffic safety and traffic flow. And hopefully that y'all can just uh, go forward with those recommendations that we're, we're proposing and that Major Trail and Officer Boone presented tonight. And if we do have an issue like that, we did it at Mirrors when we had people complaining, excessive people running the stop signs on the bikes and the cars. And so we took our bike team with our action team and put them out there um, stopping. Now, again, just like the chief says, it works while we're there and it might make an impact, but as soon as we go, people decide, hey, I'm gonna run the stop sign. Yeah, so I guess the part I just wanna understand then as a motorist, going east and west from Tarpon Ave, down Tarpon When Ave the blinky working. lights are going, stop. stop. I, well, I know out of courtesy, but I mean, is that what the law states? Is that yeah, a bicyclist? Yeah, stop when a pedestrian is in the in the crosswalk or a bicyclist, whoever's in the crosswalk, whoever enters the crosswalk. Okay, but the cr a crosswalk is considered connecting the trail across US ni or, uh, Tarpon Avenue. Am I understanding that correctly? Correct, that's a crosswalk for walkers in what it goes the sidewalk ones and the, the middle of the roadway okay all right that's what it's one and if it's not painted it. properly i'll have tony look into that and get that taken care of oh, as there's well. paint all over the place yeah but I just we'll make put sure more that... paint down <laughs> thank you for clarifying that mm -hmm. um because it, it is confusing when they have stop signs and you don't have stop signs so that's something i think that would educate that's part of the problem is people not stopping uh the other problem uh, which is stopping actually too. actually more of a problem that we've had is people stopping for no apparent reason yeah I'm aware of that um, another question I have is, um, is there any <coughs> other options to do any other flashing beacons, beacons at Ring, the Mid Block, and Hibiscus? Um, all three of those pedestrian crosswalks are heavily traveled by pedestrians, and again, I, I've traveled them by foot, and they're all very dangerous. Cars don't stop for you like they are supposed to by state law when you're in a crosswalk and you're trying to cross a road. Um, there's other concerns there. Is there any other signage that we could do or anything that we can make those areas more conducive to pedestrian safety? If you want more of, like, again, it's, I don't think that it's as much of a problem as the mid block in that. Here, here's another thing with the crosswalks. You've driven downtown, people don't use them. They park, they get out of the car. The crosswalk is 23 feet from them and they walk right across the road not using the crosswalk so i have no problem with crosswalks just understand that it doesn't solve all our problems and i don't have an issue i like uh i, I think uh, the flashing lights if you're going to put a beacon obviously uh, or a, what are they called high resident or tony high visibility flashing beacons there's a cost to them if you if you guys are in for it i'm i'm down with it however just understand that your downtown area is going to start flashing all over the place and I don't know how your businesses feel about that as well, because you're going to have lights going off here, here, here. Yeah, no, I, I like think a it's laser show. Look at. I mean, it's something we talked to the business owners about, too. Uh, there's, like I said, I've crossed all of those crosswalks. They're all dangerous. I feel unsafe. Um, if there's an area to make it more safe, I think that if that could do that, then great. Um, another question I have is. Excuse me. Uh, I hate to interrupt you, Vice Mayor, but uh, it's getting close to uh, 11 o'clock. So I need, if we're going to extend the time, I need a motion. Mayor, um, I'd like to move that we finish um, items 16, 17, and 18, and uh, ex in other words, extend the time until necessary to, to finish 16, 17, and 18, and defer item 19. Do we have a second? It's no second, it dies. Move to finish this item and extend the time to 11.15. Do I have a second for that? I'm sorry, did I get a second? second. A roll call, please. Commissioner Vaticiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Luzes? Yes. Go ahead, continue. So this was brought up a couple times. Tarpon Avenue and Pinellas Avenue intersection. The Donovan Insurance Corner. Um, if you're standing on that corner, you're fearing for your life, in my opinion. Um, you've got cars that are coming straight at you, then they're jetting over to the left. Um, a question that I, I would ask, again, don't know if it's a good idea or not, by, based on your studies, um, but is there, has there ever been evaluated to eliminate the left-hand turn on the Tarpon Avenue from the southbound traffic to have more pedestrian space 
and then have the northbound lane move over a little bit. So there's not that I know of, and I'd be You're talking about on alternate 19. I'm talking yeah, about, talking about Pinellas yeah. Avenue. Okay, that's a, a that's a FDOT. Also. Yeah, I understand. I mean, we have to start somewhere, though, right? Yeah. I um, mean, I mean if you go and stand on that corner, it, it's clear you've got a lot of people going from the Greek church that's standing on that corner to the parking lot. Um, you've got a lot of people that just move in that area, right? That walk in the area, a lot of heavy pedestrian traffic. So I've had people ask me, hey, Jake, this is a really dangerous intersection. Like, from, I, I feel unsafe. I've stood there before, so I mean, uh, my my ask is, has Tarpon PD, PD look at it? No. If not, can we look at it? Because I think it would be an area that we should work with the state on how to improve that area. There's not much space to do anything with, so that's the one question I had. Um, with that, those are all the questions I have. Thank so you. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Thank you. Commissioner Terrape. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in the interest of time, um, a couple things. One is I agree um, with trying to reestablish some important signs as it relates to speed, truck routes, um, you know, faded signs. But I think that if you were to poll many people, especially business owners in the downtown, they would feel that uh, more flashing lights is light pollution, um, more signs are, is visual pollution. You know, I mean, ultimately, we're trying to look at the beauty the natural beauty and some architectural characteristics, et cetera, that you know make that part of our downtown what it is. So I wouldn't support uh, additional flashing lights in multiple locations. Um, I think that you know this board has danced around for years the idea of a four-way stop um, at Safford Avenue and Tarpon Avenue, and that's something that I support. And I understand that. The biggest concern there is traffic circulation and backing up traffic, et cetera. And from a, a redevelopment perspective, I think that people are going to find the alternative routes and you're going to see the downtown continue to grow east and west. So I support the four way stop, you know, for many reasons. One is because I think it's needed. Um, and two is I think that instead of backing up traffic, you'll see the traffic start to divert and you'll see Orange Street, Orange Street continue to redevelop, you'll see Lemon Street continue to redevelop, et cetera. So I don't think that the, the backing up of traffic over the course of time is something to be too concerned about. This is, you know, all due respect, right? Um, no offense taken. Okay, good. I you can be, you're very you can passionate. Be wrong. <laughs> um, so, you know, I mean, in a nutshell, the motion didn't include the four-way stop. So as it exists, I won't, I won't support it. But I think that, you know, the, uh, the freshening up of the signage, um, making sure that the speed limits, you know, are going down in speed as we get to those uh, enforcement areas, I do support that. Um, but I think that, you know, we've talked about it for years. We've danced around it for years. I think that you know, four-way stop is necessary. And give me some clarity on that. We, that does not require FDOT approval, correct? I don't believe I don't, it would. I don't believe it would. Because we own it? So, because we own Tarpon Avenue, and it doesn't require FDT, FDOT approval, in the event that it wasn't working out, <coughs> it's a quick fix, right? Just as quick well, as you, you could put you, them in, you could quickly take them out, right? Doesn't require. I, I don't know that it'd be a quick fix. Or, I, I don't well, I'm know. I'm just saying. I mean, it doesn't require DOT approval. It doesn't right, require it wouldn't, county that approval. That we know of, it would not re require right. FDOT. Okay. Study so, or whatever. That's you know that that's my thinking. I don't think that the traffic backing up is something to be concerned about. I think you know we've got other alternative routes. You got MLK. You've got Live Oak. You got Lemon Orange. And and it's my belief that you know the. Uh, drivers, vehicular traffic, et cetera, would find those alternative routes and you continue, continue to see redevelopment east and west in those areas, which I think is a good thing. Um, I think closing Safford Avenue, it's been shopped, you know, a while. I think that's a mistake. I don't, definitely don't support that. Um, I mean, your presentation in itself shows that it's a mistake as it relates to how you would make that traffic flow with the surrounding businesses, right? It just doesn't work. Um, 
like I said, the light pollution with flashing lights is a major concern, as is additional signage that's not necessarily needed in some cases. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you guys for the presentation. I support the original motion, which was basically just all of your recommendations. Uh, the only thing I wanted to see if you guys would be willing to bend on or if it exists is uh, the flashing yellow beacons, which we're recommending at uh, Tarpon Ave and Gross Ave, and then eastbound Tarpon Ave and Pinellas Ave. Um, is, that, is that something that would have that reflective tape, uh, like the red one? That you mentioned? You mean, could you get that instead of the flashing instead of the, beacon? Yeah, instead of the flashing I'm sure beacon. we could. Is that something the commission would have any appetite for? Because oh, oh, I just. Yeah, I think that there are. Yeah, I, I basically, I, I just, I want less flashing lights, the better around downtown. I just, I, I think if it's, if it's between a flashing light and the reflective, even if the reflective's there as is. You're right talking now. about the, the, your speed signs? Yeah, the that, uh, yeah, that's just to draw attention to their speed that they're going to slow down because it's going to change at Gross Avenue. If you guys right. approve it, it's going to go down to 20. You're talking about the yield sign, like the pedestrian yield sign, I think, right, for the crosswalks. Is that what you're talking about? No, um, he's no. talking about the yellow beacon. Flashing yellow beacons. Okay. The one that's currently at Tarpon and Gross, that, that doesn't affect the businesses if you're going westbound anyway. It's mm -hmm. one there currently. Okay. And if you're coming uh, off of Pinellas, it's just the your speed with a 20 mile an hour yellow sign. There is no beacon, I believe, on that. that right. Beacon. And I'm seeing in the, in the recommendations is to place a yellow flashing beacon there. It would be with a sign but, saying this is a bike and a um, bike and a pedestrian, but it still wouldn't affect the businesses because it would shine more towards Mother Mears parking lot. Yeah, I, I'm not even worried about necessarily like the light bleeding into the businesses. I just think it, it looks worse on downtown. I think it, you know, it looks more yeah, commercial. Yeah, that's just, uh, again, that was just to draw mean. attention to it, to slow people down. And if you guys, oh, that's fine. Yeah, and I, I support every recommendation. And this, again, it's not a sticking point. I'm going to support it even if this is included. But is that something that the commission might want to say, hey, no, no flashing yellow beacons added? I support that. Gonna wait till my comment and then I'll address that. Okay. I, again, I'm I'm good with it either way. So, if you want to amend the motion, that's fine. And if you don't, that's fine too. You done. Yep. Commissioner Tikiotis. Yeah. I'll just to kind of straighten out my recommendation a little bit. Um, by the way, I, I think y'all did a great job. I'm very happy with the report. Uh, the only comment I want to make is that I'm still not convinced that. Um, as far as the truck routes and everything, I think sending them still down through Lemon Street is going to be a challenge and everything. So I just think we need to work on that in the future a little more, but not, not for tonight. Um, as far as the recommendation, I want to make sure that uh, when we, your recommendation was uh, not to go with the streetscape on Safford, which meant not to close it. Is that correct? That's okay, correct. so we're good on that. Um, the what we've got right now is, uh, as far as uh, Commissioner Terrapani's comment, we're not increasing, or were we increasing the number of flashing lights in your recommendations? I don't recall that there was an increase. The only two that we were talking about. Were, the ones that were those uh, gross and Pinellas. That was, that the Commissioner said, we, that, could you put more in? But that wasn't in here. That's not part of our proposal or recommendations. So it, it, There's it, no more, no new lighting going in. Except for the flashing yellow beacon. Right, that, which is existing, is that correct? Yeah. One is. One is, okay. So, Commissioner Donovan, what you would want to do is to eliminate that one as well? I mean, if it's up there, we don't have to take it down, but there is at least one additional flashing yellow beacon that's recommended here, and I, I'm saying we just don't do that one. Okay. I'll, I'll, is, that, is that acceptable to the police department? Yes, okay. sir. Um, I, I'm, I'll, I'm in my motion to reflect that. Okay. Still second. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Mayor, I've got one more comment. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, you brought up the left turn issue being an issue yes. at Stafford and Tarpon Avenue. Commissioner Terrapani brought a before we stop as a solution to that. I feel it, it would only be a right-hand turn only. Major Trill brought up concerns about traffic and other areas being an issue. 
Um, I just constantly hear that this is such a nuisance, or not a nuisance, this is an issue that needs to be addressed from a safety perspective, pedestrian, traffic. Ultimately, a four-way stop, I think, would help that. Um, it would. We have a four-way stop at MLK and Safford, and a light at MLK and Safford, and there's a lot of school traffic that goes down MLK as well, too. It does back up at the light west, but traffic still flows through MLK and Safford and the four-way stop well. Um, so I would totally support a four-way stop at this Tarpon Avenue in Safford. I think it's something that's needed. Uh, we need to do something to improve the safety, and at the, at the end of the day, I don't think we're there yet unless we do something to that measure. Mayor, may I say something? Um, Major Trill, what did you take on a four-way stop? We you didn't can, recommend it. You do not? I also I, think it would be more dangerous. Well, Just from all of my experience, which I got a lot of it, four-way stop, go look at some of the other four-way stops in this town and people seeing which way to go. Um, in my opinion, it would be more dangerous. And it will probably add more I, confusion I, down there. It's not recommended by the experts, so I will not support that. Do you have something else that you want to well, I wouldn't either, but even if we move forward, I think just to be um, responsible, there ought to be a study on it. I mean, not just accept a four-way stop and move ahead with it. Um, so I'm not supporting a four-way stop either this evening. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not, just for clarification, that's not part of the motion, though. No, it's not. Uh, I'm not amending uh, it to that, reflect yeah. that, yeah. So for further clarification, like we have not, and improve the safety of Safford and Tarpon Avenue based on the discussion tonight. Right, it nothing's been done. It stays as, as is, and it's still a mess, well, and it's, <clears throat> we still get complaints from residents, different boards. I think uh, reducing the speed down there could help with that, as well as changing out the stop uh, placard to a yield placard will help uh, with the confusion down there as well. Okay, I hope so, but I still think it's gonna create a, there's still a safety issue, in my opinion, so. But I appreciate the, the presentation and everything. I mean, I value you guys' um, comments and everything, so thank you so much. Yeah, I think that was a, a uh, great presentation, and uh, i uh, very uh, uh, thankful for the recommendations we got. I wish we had more answers on the, uh, on the four ways, I mean, on the intersection of Safford and Tarpon. It's been the concern of uh, many people uh, throughout the city, so I don't know what else we can do with that. But uh, perhaps you want to think about it and come back later if you have something, any different ideas on that. In the meantime, you, we have an, you got enough uh, recommendations to, uh, uh, to make improvements, re including reducing the speed limit and play signs and the other things that you mentioned. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Vatikiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? No. Vice Mayor Carr? No. Mayor Alahusis? Yes. Well, that concludes our uh, meeting tonight, mm -hmm. and it's adjourned at 11.07 p.m. Didn't we say to go to? No, we said we were going to stop at that agenda item or 11.15. It was. Good night, everybody. <laughs>